everybody and welcome to Dinners with Donna. I am Donna. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, welcome into my kitchen. Um, I love to cook and I do this once every other Sunday. Um, I also love Disney and we're going to cook everything today with crescent roll dough. So who doesn't love that? Right, Richard? Right. That's my kitchen crew, Richard. <laughs> So um, before we get started today, um, I just want to, well, first of all, of course, thank all of my channel members. Thank you so much for all of your support. It means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also to my mods with the blue wrenches. Thank you for all your help in keeping the chat family friendly and clean and going and answering questions. You guys rock. So before we start, just a few mousekeeping, housekeeping things. I got some mail, and you know how much I love my magic mail. I love when I get cards from you guys. It always brightens my day. It makes me so happy. Um, I got this one from Kaylee. Uh, it was a thank you card, and she's just so sweet, and she does so much for my channel. She came up with my original logo, for those of you who don't know. Um, she's extraordinary in the chat. She's one of my trusty moderators who I adore. And she is amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kaylee. Okay, this next one is also very special. Um, this is a thank you card from Peyton, who is uh, Joy and Jay uh, Sunudo's uh, daughter. She is amazing. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting her in person. And um, she sent me a thank you card. She's such a sweet, sweet girl. Uh, thank you, Peyton. We love you. Then I got a very nice thank you note uh, from Dreamer Deborah, one of our great viewers and friends. Uh, love you, Deborah, and thank you for your sweet note. I'm not going to read the notes out loud because, you know, they're kind of personal. So I just kind of, you know, I'm going to show you the cards. But yeah, she sent a lovely note, and Deborah, we, we appreciate you so much. Then, speaking of the wonderful Sanudo family, I got something extra special from Joy. She made me this hand-painted uh, watercolor postcard uh, with a sunflower, and it's absolutely stunning, guys. I mean, I couldn't do that at all. <laughs> I couldn't even come close. So, Joy, thank you so much for taking the time to do this and send it to me. It's absolutely beautiful, and I love all the painting that Joy has been doing. She posts it on her Instagram. Uh, she paints with Meg uh, every month. That's one of the things Meg's channel members do, Mickey's Magic. Um, but it, she's really talented. Thank you so much, Joy. And then, this is a little bit funny because um, it's a belated birthday card. And as you know, my birthday was back in July. <laughs> but I love this card. Isn't it great? And this is from Kate Udawali Lane. Thank you, Kate. And she said, better late than never. So yes, better late than never. And I just love it. And I think it's so sparkly and cute. And it's a cupcake. I mean, who doesn't have a cupcake? It's great. So thank you very much, all of you. You guys always brighten my day with your magic mail. And I just, I, and when I go to my box, I'm always like surprised. Oh, there's a card. This is so awesome. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm going to put the mail away so I don't get it dirty in the kitchen. All right, so we're going to get started on some recipes, and then I have some things to tell you guys about um, that I had opportunities to do um, last week um, with Give Kids the World, which was amazing. So I will get into that later. But first, I will tell you that we preheated our oven to 375 degrees, and we are making everything today with crescent roll dough in some way, shape, or form. So we are starting with what's called chicken egg pie. I've been making this breakfast brunch recipe for my family for decades. Um, I first found it in an issue when you used to like subscribe to magazines, if anyone remembers that, um, of Taste of Home. And I found it in that magazine and I marked it down. Now you can find it on the internet, so go internet. But um, yeah, I found it in a magazine and my family loved it and it's become a favorite. So. Richie's had it. Oh, hi, Brandy. I did not get a card from you. I just checked my box on Friday, but mail could be slow, so I'll keep looking. But thank you. It's so nice when you guys think of me. That means the world, honestly. Okay. 
So now for the chicken egg pie, I know this one in my sleep, so I don't really have it printed out, but I, I put a link for you guys. Um, so what I did was preheat the oven to 375 degrees. We've got a 10 inch pie plate. You can use nine or 10, it doesn't matter. Then we have a roll of our crescent roll dough. You can use reduced fat, doesn't matter. You could also use a dough sheet that has the, where the, it's not perforated into the triangles. That's fine too. We're gonna be using some of that later for pizza we'll be making. <laughs> Excuse me, we'll be making. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Huh? What's a magazine? Uh, oh, yay! That's exciting. Yay! I can't wait. Okay. So, you know, some people get scared by the can. I'm not scared of the can. I've been doing this for years. It makes that popping thing. If it doesn't pop when you're opening it, you know, peeling the paper off, just give it a good whack on the counter and it's open. Richard looks scared. <laughs> like, don't do that to me, lady. Okay. So this is one of the things that I love about um, Pillsbury Crescent Roll Dough. And you can use generic store brand, but I always find uh, that the Pillsbury one, it just holds up better. Um, I think they put more butter in it, maybe. I don't know. But anyhow, we're going to separate these into triangles. And can they see what I'm doing, Richard? And then we put the points inward. Okay, thank you. <laughs> can remove the bowls. Now can they see? Okay, cool. We're all, all good now. Okay, so we're going to put our, there's eight in a can, of course. So we're going to put the pointed, you know, the points in. And I love using these for all kinds of different um, quiche crust, pie crust, anything like that. It makes a great crust. It's buttery and flaky and uh, it's amazing. I love crescent roll dough. And fun fact, a crescent roll only has 100 calories in each roll. As long as you don't eat the whole can, you're good. <laughs> okay. So what you do is you're going to fit it and, and get in there and, you know, of course, make sure your hands are clean and, uh, you know, make it so the seams are together so we don't have holes in our crust. And it comes together really nicely. And just make sure you go up the sides of the pan as well. And I turn my pan as I go. I do this when I'm making pie crust of any kind, crescent roll or not, um, just to get it up the sides of the pan. Okay. So guys, um, fun thing happened about, what was it, was it last? It was last week, so almost a week, that we got a uh, new mascot for Dinners with Donna. It's a living, breathing beta fish. Um, he's absolutely beautiful. His, we named him Ricky uh, because that's blending Richie and Nikki, which of those of you who don't know Nick is, was our technical guy from the beginning. Um, he got, got a job, so he can't help us on Sundays as much anymore. Um, but we love Nikki and Richie. So Sam and I got the beta fish and she's like, what should we name it? I said, how about Ricky? We can put their names together. She's like, I like it. So yeah, maybe we'll show you Ricky later. He's absolutely beautiful. And he'll be a week old at our house tomorrow. Okay, so just, you know, take your time to get everything sealed. You won't, don't want any of the perforations, no holes, because you don't want things leaking. That makes a mess. And I did spray the um, pie dish with my best friend, Pam the nonstick cooking spray before I started this. And you can see, there we go. It looks like that. So it looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna get the rest of the ingredients which we're gonna make the filling out of. So we're gonna grab some, I use egg beaters. You can use whole eggs. Jerry says, hi Donna, woohoo. Woohoo Jerry, welcome in. I'm so glad you made it. Okay. And then we're going to have some cheese and some bacon and ham. 
this is going to be really loaded. It's going to be great. Let's see. I think I have an open cheese. I do. Samantha Lowe says she's relaxing in her hammock upstairs. No heck, Sam. You're supposed to be on kitchen crew duty. She's up in her hammock that we bought from Nikki. <laughs> okay. So we've got our shredded cheese. You can use any kind you want. I'm just using the Mexican because it has a good blend of cheeses. It's got, you know, the Colby, the Jack, Asadero, and uh, Queso Quesadilla. So we're going to use that. We're going to sprinkle it in the bottom. And I'm going to sprinkle some on the bottom of the um, crust and then on the top as well. So let's make it pretty. I got some on the counter, so I'll put it back in here. Got a nice layer of the cheese going. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so now we just have, and now you can use just ham, you can use just bacon, you can use sausage, you can use whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm using ham and bacon. That's what the original recipe calls for. Usually when I'm making this for us, I usually use just ham. Um, but I thought, you know what, we're going to do it the way it was originally made. So we're going to do it with the ham and the bacon today. So you just sprinkle as much as you want. You don't want to overstuff your pie, you know. But be generous and put as, you know, but if you don't like ham, you don't have to put as much. I'm going to get that going like that. Looks really good. So we're looking about, I'm going to say one to one and a half cups of um, chopped ham. Which is really nice. And I like, I like a, a hearty uh, pie, so I'm just going to use all my ham. And then I don't have to worry about using it later. Okay, so there's our ham. I'm going to wash my hands. Excuse the water noise. Okay. And then what I did was, you know me, I like to prep. I'm the prep queen. So I um, have my bacon, about like five slices, and it's pre-cooked and crumbled. So we're all ready to go. You just sprinkle that over the top. I mean, how easy is this? And it's such a crowd pleaser. Everyone loves this so much. Every time I make it, Sam's like, oh boy. And she does not like breakfast, but she loves this. Okay. So yeah, just gonna get it evenly distributed. We've got a lot of ham in there. Okay, so now I'm going to get my measuring cups out. All right, so we need a, cu a cup of egg beaters. Am I stopped? Hashtag <laughs> prep queen. <laughs> Very funny, Richie. I thought we lagged or something. I'm like, oh no, don't tell me we lagged. Because we do have storms and rain going through, guys. So if we do lag or time out or whatever, just keep refreshing and it should come back. Um, but also tag us and let us know because I get so involved in my cooking, I don't realize what's going on. All right, so when you're doing your egg beaters, remember it's a quarter of a cup to an egg. So we need four eggs for this. So we're gonna do one cup. BH says, Donna, I bet you could serve pickles and mustard on saltine crackers and people would love it. Oh, CH, you're too kind. I don't know about that, but um, yeah, that's so sweet of you to say. I just, I enjoy what I do so much and I try to get good flavor combinations that everyone will like. So hopefully this is a winner for everybody. Oops. Okay. That was stuck under my milk. All right. The trash run. And now we need a third of a cup of milk. So this will bring us up to one and a third cups. There we go. And then we're just going to mix it, whisk it together, and then pour it evenly and gingerly over the pie. Oh, wait, but I forgot something. Remember, I said I was going to put some cheese on the top as well. So we kind of have like a blanket 
some on the bottom and some on the top. Oh, that's the mouse box says. I assume using regular eggs is okay too. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can use four regular eggs or a cup of egg beaters like we did here. Okay. That's looking good. Okay, so now we're also going to grab some salt and pepper. And Richard, if you wouldn't mind grabbing me the pepper. Did our Alexa come on? Whoops. The black pepper, please. Thank you. I'll leave my salt and pepper here so I can use it. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And now I need a whisk. You could use a fork. It doesn't really matter. I wish I had a little whisk. I think I do over here. <laughs> I think I'll use the French whisk that one of my viewers sent to me. Oh, that looks really great. I sent that to you. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> But I'm so appreciative because I love it, Richard. And whoever sent it to me, if you say in the chat, I would really appreciate it because I can't for the life of me remember now. And I know I know it's one of those things that it's in my head, but it's not coming to me at the moment. So I apologize. And thank you, Richard, for calling me out. <laughs> and he's sitting here laughing at me. So that's why I'm laughing. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Okay. Yes, we will do a chat check in just one moment, though, because we're going to evenly pour this over our pie crust, and then we're going to pop it in the oven, then we can do a chat check. Okay, we're good to go with that. Thank you for throwing me under the bus, Richard. <laughs> you know I forget things like that when I'm cooking. Okay, into the oven it goes. Now, I will say that the recipe says to... Um, like tent it with foil. I used to do that like way back in the day. I don't do that anymore. It's to prevent overbrowning of the edge of the crust. But we're going to put this on for, why did my oven just go off? That's weird. Okay, we're going to put it back on. We're going to put the timer on. There. I put it in for about 40 minutes. That's usually how long it takes in my oven. Um, but we'll check on it periodically and make sure it's not over browning or anything. And if it is over browning, then we can tent it. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. Let's do a chat check. Road trip Dave. Dave! I hope you guys are all feeling better. And I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. This is our dream. Well, hello, Jeff and Ange. Welcome in. Molly Rook. Hi, Molly. CH. CH. Dad Resort TV One. Woohoo, Jay. Mom Resort TV. Hi, Jane. Monorail Molly. Hi, Molly. Janie B. Hi, Janie. Archangel. Michael, it's so good to see you. Megan G. Hi, Megan. Rebecca Kelly. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome in. Annette. Hi, Annette. Noelle Ash. Hi, Noelle. Jennifer Piccolo. Hi, Jen. Good to see you. Surf Bum. John, welcome in. Christopher Shaw. Hello, Christopher. Welcome. Chad Ferrand. Hi, Chad. ALJ. Hi, ALJ. It's always good to see you. Share the magic. Share. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Hopper. Hi, Happy Hopper. I hope you're doing well. Janie B. Oh, you said Janie, no. but hi, Janie. <laughs> I always say her twice. <laughs> Melissa from Mouse Talk. Hi, Melissa. I'm so glad you're here. Jan S. Disney. Well, hello, Jan. Blue Polo. Hi, Blue Polo and Blue Polo's mom. I hope you're both watching. They are. <laughs> hello. Todd B. Hi, Todd. Tennessee Bear. Hello, Tim. 
Mike Clemens. Hi, Mike. Somebody named Rob Fuzz. I don't know who that is. Oh, Samantha calls him Rob Fuzz because she always mistypes his name. Hi, Rob. Welcome in. Tasha, Thank you for being here. Tasha Rogers. Hi, Tasha. We're just about Are we caught up? up? Okay. Simba 2. Oh, hi, Simba 2. <laughs> BBC Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Welcome in. They Thank you hiding. for being here. And who? I said they were hiding. Her. Oh, they were hiding. Rebecca Kelly. You said Rebecca, but hello again. <laughs> That'll do it. Oh, Steph loves Disney. Oh, hi, Steph. Welcome in. Well, thank you for being here, everyone. You know, I appreciate all of you. And it always just makes me so happy when I hear him saying your names. Because I'm like, yay, all my friends are here. So it Car always makes me happy. Carolyn Wonderland. Hi, Carol. Welcome in. Rockin' Robin. Hi, Rockin' Robin. Angela Minta. Angela. Diane Hertz. Hi, Diana. Disney World Freak. Hi, Carlos. Um, what up on Oh, Mickey Travels. Hi, Mickey Travels. Welcome in. Luciana. Hi, Luciana. Okay. We good? Jess got Disney. Oh, hi, Jess. Welcome in. Tinker Fox. Well, hello, hello. Okay. We good now? You're good now. Okay. If I'm always, if I look this way, it's I'm not like trying to be, I'm looking at Richard for like direction because sometimes I'm like, what do I, are we done? <laughs> so, okay, we're caught up? Yes, if I okay. missed you, put your name in the chat. Yeah, just tag at R. Johns and he'll find you. But yeah, welcome in everyone. And I'm so glad that you're here. This is going to be so much fun today. Um, AAA Sparkles popped in. Oh, hi, AAA Sparkles. And Sandy Pandy. Well, hello, Sandy. Welcome and Mary in. Mary Kehoe. Oh, Mary. It's always so nice when you're here. Welcome Kathy in. H. And who? Oh, hi, Kathy. Okay, so here's what we're doing now. Um, we've got our breakfast pie in the oven. We are now going to move on to our um, chicken cordon bleu rolls, which are going to be amazing. And um, let's see, I'm going to get some things prepped for that. I've got my um, other pie dish here, which I prepared, so that's good to go. And then I'm going to move some things around a little bit just so I can get my big cutting board because I'm going to need it because we're making rolls. Okay. So tip, get a good size cutting board when you're rolling out so that it fits your big sheet of dough. So what we're going to do with this one is really awesome. We're going to be using a uh, crescent roll dough sheet. So it's not perforated. So you don't have to worry about all those little seams and, and getting them all together. Now, if you can't find this in the store, no worries. Just get a regular can of crescent roll dough, but just make sure you sure up all those perforations and seams and pinch them together so that you don't have holes and leaks and stuff. So we're going to have that. Yes, sir. Because I'm not done. Don't be fresh, Richie. Okay, so we've got some ham. We're going to grab that. And then, let's see. I've got to figure out which one of these has my chicken. This one? Oh, thank you so much. Let's see. I think this is my chicken. Yeah. Okay, so corn and blue, of course, chicken. And we've got our ham. So that's going there and then we're going to have Swiss cheese I did I have like 10 packages in here it's it's pretty ridiculous <laughs> I usually have like two on hand I usually have like a dough sheet one and a regular can um, but because you know it's a special occasion today so I had to go all out okay so all right we have our chicken, our ham, our Swiss cheese, our crescent roll dough sheet, and we need some Italian seasoning, believe it or not. And this is not a recipe I made up, so um, I'm not sure where this plays into a French, uh, traditionally French recipe, but we'll see how it goes. Yvonne really wants to know. Hi, Yvonne. What cheese do you suggest if someone doesn't like Swiss? 
You could use Gruyere. You could even use cheddar, and then it's just like a ham and cheddar and chicken. I mean, it really is your taste. You don't have to make it a cordon bleu if you don't want to. Okay. And see, these aren't popping, so I guess they don't want to scare me today. But they usually don't anyway. But oh, that needed two wax. I'm getting weak, Richard. Took two hits. <laughs> you are almost 50. Ooh, just remember, you're older, mister, by a few years. Okay. So we're going to unroll this dough sheet. Okay. And see, it tore just a tad, but that's okay. No worries here. Okay. Now, it says to sprinkle the... Um, with about a half a teaspoon of seasoning. So we're gonna put the seasoning on. I'm just gonna to refer to my recipe for one second because I'm gonna make sure I wasn't supposed to roll it out. And it says, ding, 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 ding. Everyone's excoriating me for saying your age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. He's always older, so I always win. So he's got, he's got a young chick. He's lucky. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. With crescent roll goes pinch the seams. Yeah, the sprinkle with Italian. Okay, so cheese, they said to do the cheese first. And this says eight slices. I'm just going to flatten this out just a tad bit more. I want a little more surface area, you know? Oh, we're good. Okay. So we need eight slices. So one, two. And they can overlap just a touch. No big deal. Hi, Mike. Okay. So that was, this is basically so easy. And you're just layering these things, which is easy peasy. Okay. Hi, Emily. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. It's good to see you. Okay. So now what I did is uh, you want, it says two chicken breasts, um, cooked, of course, and thinly sliced. So what I did was I did mine in the Instant Pot. Um, I put two cups of chicken stock, and then I put the chicken in, no rack or anything, just into the broth with salt and pepper. And then I pressure uh, cooked it on high for 10 minutes with a natural release of 10 minutes, and then took it out, and then I sliced it thin. So we're going to put this chicken next. And this is two chicken breasts. I'm, I'm thinking I, that we might have extra, but you never know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Alyssa here. Hi, Alyssa and Neil. Welcome in. And I'm sorry, this one's not gluten-free. They don't make gluten-free crescent roll dough and Pillsbury, if you're listening, which I doubt they are. But if they are, you need to do that. <laughs> Pillsbury watches all your streams. They need to make gluten-free uh, crescent roll dough. Okay. And like, you know, we're just basically layering all of this. Rolling this up is going to be quite interesting, I might say. Hi, Michelle. Welcome in. And this is going to take most of the chicken. So, okay. Hi, Angie. Okay, so we have a little chicken if you want to nibble, but I'll put it here for now. I'm going to wash my hand. Okay. And now we're just going to put the ham on top. So this is like easy. You're just layering everything. And then we're going to roll it up, and then we're going to slice them. All right. And I'm going to put 
I'm just going to return some things to the fridge because it'll make more room for us. Oh, okay. We'll see you later, Jeff and Ange. I'm so glad you stopped in, though. Thank you so much. Mini golfing looked fun yesterday. Did you see that? They went to Fantasia Gardens with um, Joey from It's Joey's World. I didn't even know Joey was here. <laughs> I'm so out of the loop. I don't get to the parks as much anymore. I don't know if I, I most of you probably heard, but I, I um, went into the podiatrist on um, Friday because, um, you know, my plantar fasciitis was getting better, and but I was having pain on the outside edge of my foot, and I had like a bump there, and I thought, you know, it really hurt, even when I wasn't standing on it or anything. So I thought, oh gosh, I hope I didn't, you know, stress fracture or break a bone or something. I went in and he actually, the podiatrist thought I, I did break a bone. So he said, we better x-ray it. Well, it turns out it wasn't a break, thank goodness, but I do have a bad case of tendonitis. So I had to get uh, cortisone shots and all that good stuff. So I, I've been trying not to walk too much at the parks because it just inflames everything, which happens when you're almost 50, Richie. <laughs> and so we're doing the same thing with the ham. We're just going to layer it on. Uh, two, four, six. Yeah, it's going to take about eight to ten slices, give or take. Oh, um, well, I will, I will be at some point. I don't think I will be there like on October 1st. The crowds still kind of get me, um, you know, and um, I kind of like to have a little bit more elbow room. It's, it, I'm having a feeling it's going to be like super duper crowded and that makes me a little bit nervous. But um, yeah, it's going to be a fun time for sure though. Okay, so now we're going to roll this up, and I'm going to make sure I roll it the right way. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, CH, um, I did have Beverly at the um, at the um, Coca-Cola store at Disney Springs uh, when we did that stream with Steven from Give Kids the World, and that was awesome. And I'll be honest with you, it was good to have Beverly again. Okay, so we're going to roll this up like that and there's going to be some leakage and that's okay okay well sam has spoken okay so now if you have some leakage on the edge don't worry about it okay so i'm gonna go we want eight so what i'm gonna do is cut them in half and then in half, and then in half. And then we should have eight rolls about the same size. And these are gonna be really pretty. Look at that, guys. They look amazing. Roll them up. Janie B wants to know if you have an anti-fatigue mat to stand on. I do. I, I've got one right now, and I always use it in the kitchen. Um, but um, for some reason, after a while, it just, um, my feet just kick in. And I wear my Brooks running shoes even inside now, um, even though I don't like to wear shoes inside for, you know, getting germs in the house. But I have a special pair just for inside the house that I wear. And uh, it, um, they work well. I use Brooks running shoes. That's what my uh, podiatrist recommended, my foot and ankle specialist. And um, I've got one pair for outdoors and one that I wear in my kitchen. And um, the anti-fatigue mats are really good. I've got two, one here where I'm standing right now. And then I have one by the sink. Super chat. Oh. Nancy oh, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you for another stream. Donna, Richie, and Sam. Hope your foot gets better soon, too. 
Oh, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. And yeah, it's been ongoing. I've had the plantar fasciitis for a year. The tendonitis, I asked him, I said, I'm like, is this related to this or is this just a separate thing? And he's like, yeah, it's a whole separate thing. And I'm like, I hate this foot of mine. It's the same foot. So I was like, ah. <laughs> but, you know, you deal with life's punches. Okay. Bru Polo says he wears Brooks and he loves them. Mm -hmm. They really help a lot. But I knew something was wrong when um, my inserts, because I had inserts from the foot and ankle specialist, and my inserts were hurting so bad, I was almost like in tears. So I knew something was wrong. I took the inserts out and it helped, but I still was in so much pain. And that's when I made the appointment. I said, something's not right here. And I was right, but not quite right about what it was, but that's okay. Okay. Jennifer said that would make an awesome quick dinner. Oh, for sure. So here's what they look like. All rolled up. We're going to put them in the oven. Um, I got to read the time and everything. And then we're going to make a um, honey Dijon mustard sauce to dip it in. I'm going to wash off my cutting board so I can reuse it. JL's here. JL, welcome in. It's good to see you. Okay. I'm just washing off my cutting board real fast, guys, so I can reuse it. Even though everything on it was cooked, I just want to make sure it's, you know, clean and everything. Everyone can see your new magnet. What magnet? On the fridge. The oh. new. Which one? Your new one. Oh, my dinner's with Donna magnet? Oh, my pass holder magnet. Well, I see I got a bunch of them, guys. So I got my pass holder magnet. And then when I was at the Give Kids the World event last week um, for the Diz family reunion, I got these from the Lost Brothers. And then I got, this is not really a um, magnet, but it's actually a little card from my friend, uh, Kellen, uh, who was a wish child. And he now does artwork and volunteers at Give Kids the World and sells his paintings for... Uh, to raise money for them, and he makes the most beautiful paintings. Uh, I got three of them. <laughs> I bought three of them at the event, and uh, he does really beautiful work. I'll show you. This, he did this one. I love the colors. And I'm going to put them on a wall, and I'm going to call it my Kellen wall. Because every time I look at him, I'm going to think of Kellen, and he's so inspiring, and the work he does at such a young age, he's amazing. Him and his family just touched my heart. And they have an Instagram, too. They do have an Instagram, and I'll give that to you in just a second. I want to show you the rest of the pictures. This one's called Winter Wonderland. Isn't it pretty? But we're going to hang these up, and I'm going to have my Kellen wall. I'm going to look at him every day and, and think of him and remember to be positive and, and help others. Okay. So now, if you want to check out Kellen and his family, um, his name's Kellen Jackley, and his Instagram is uh, K A Y K E L. MJ, so KKLMJ on Instagram, um, and he does amazing things. Just be sure to check him out. He's an awesome little friend of mine, and you never know, he might be making an appearance on one of my shows sometime. All right. Let's see now. This says, I brought it over here. We are gonna bake it at 375 for 18 to 20 minutes. Tasha said, Kellen gave $2,000 last night. He at the did. Gala. He most certainly did. All made from his paintings. Yeah, from his paintings. He sells his paintings at events and he he's incredible. His original one uh, brought $8,000, I believe. Uh, I think it was in 2019 at the gala, and um, he's just so inspiring. And they all of his 
uh, pictures have meaning. And um, he's just such a bright young man, honestly. And his sister's incredible. And I just love the family dynamic there. They're awesome. Love those guys. Hey, Nikki. Welcome in, welcome in. Okay. So we already knocked a few out. Let's say we do another one, shall we, Richie? Let's keep going. Mary Lou Lind Lindelof says she's on making a grocery list so she can make these recipes. Yay, that's awesome. I love it. Okay, so next we are making, guess what we're going to make? He's looking at me clueless. <laughs> I never read your stuff online. <laughs> We're going to be making a blue cheesy prosciutto appetizer pizza, but I'm switching mine up because um, the original recipe calls for Pillsbury uh, pizza crust, but we're going to use a um, crescent roll dough sheet and we're going to use the prosciutto and the blue cheese. However, we are instead of the apricot preserves going to use a mango chutney just to jazz things up a little bit. So. Carla said, doing well, Donna. Just welcomed our first granddaughter this week. Yay! Congratulations. That's wonderful news. That's always such a blessing. I love it. New babies are so wonderful. JL wants to know if you're getting the new one terabyte iPhone. Oh, JL. That Apple event was something else. And I will tell you, yes. <laughs> I ordered the, because I actually paid, my phone was all paid off, so I upgraded to the um, iPhone 13 Pro Max. I got it in blue, and I did get the terabyte, and I'm really excited about it. You put a lot of booty photos on that. Okay, so, oh, we have our baking sheet. I lined it with nonstick uh, foil, my other best friend next to Pam. Sorry, Richie. <laughs> and I've got my dough sheet that we're going to put out here. All right. Molly Rook wants to know if she can use cheddar on the pizza because she doesn't like blue cheese. You can absolutely do that. You can use whatever cheese you like. And don't ever feel, and I, I've always told you guys this, don't ever feel that my recipes are something you have to follow strictly. If there's an ingredient that you don't like, either omit it completely or switch it up with something you do like and, and see how it goes. And, you know, most of the time it turns out really delicious. So, you know, happy little accents. I love that. There we go. JL's getting a terabyte also. Yay, JL. Did you get, what, what color did you get? Rob, I like the blue. Rob Fuzz is jealous. I know, right, Rob? <laughs> Janie B wants the purple one. The purple one, yeah, but that one I couldn't get in the um, in the Mac. You could only get it in the Pro, so Sam got that one. And we're just going to stretch this out. And this is an appetizer pizza. It doesn't have to fill this cookie sheet. I'm just trying to, um, you know, get it to go out a little bit. It doesn't have to fill the cookie sheet. It can be flatbread size. It doesn't have to be, you know, this big mammoth thing. But we are going to pre-bake the crust. JL got the graphite one. Ooh, that was my second choice. That's Pamela, awesome. Pamela Hoffman says, sorry Hi, I'm Pamela. late. Welcome in. Oh, no worries. It's me. I'm your best friend. She said. Aw. You guys are so sweet. Okay, so I'm liking the way this is looking, to be honest. And we're going to pop this into the oven. <laughs> Did I inspire you, Ron? <laughs> I'm sticking with my 12. <laughs> All right, so this goes into the oven for about eight minutes to pre-bake, and then we'll get it all dressed up and real pretty. Let's see. Well, yeah. I'm going to put this on the other timer. Okay. 
So now what we need to do is we need some cream cheese, a third of a cup and a quarter of a cup of crumbled blue cheese. And we're gonna microwave that just for 30 seconds to soften it up so we can combine it and then put it over the crust. Um, and mozzarella cheese also goes in here, but I don't think we put the mozzarella in there. No, we do the cream cheese and the blue cheese. And then, yep, then we sprinkle with the mozzarella and then the prosciutto and we go from there. So that's what we're gonna do. Gonna get oh, now you're talking, Jennifer. You're right up my alley. Okay. So do I have, I'm trying to find mozzarella and let's see what I can find here. I know it's in here somewhere. That's Parmesan. Here we go. Perfect. Sorry, guys. It took me a minute to find my other cheese. When you make a lot of recipes at once, there's a lot going into it. Okay, so we're going to put some blue cheese, and we're going to put our cream cheese. Rob says he's on apple.com right now. Yay! I love it. That's exciting. Okay. So I'm just going to guesstimate. We're not baking, so it does, it's not an exact science. So I'm just kind of guesstimating here. And I like blue cheese, so it's not, you know, not going to hurt me if I have a little extra. And I think Richard likes blue cheese as well. Yes. Are we already on our third recipe? Is that really for real? Okay. Oh, hi, James. Welcome in. Well, hello, Amy. Okay. How much did I say? A third of a cup of cream cheese. Okay. That's about right. This is more of like a half, but that's okay. Get that in the bowl. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the microwave for 30 seconds and then dispose of this wrapper. And I will be back shortly. Oops. Well, that didn't work. Can you not have the timer on when the thing's on? Hold on a second. I got cream cheese on the microwave. <laughs> Let's see, four minutes and 35 seconds. Yeah, I guess you can't have the timer on. It's about four minutes. Do I have to press the thing? Hey Siri, put timer on for four minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, four minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Thank you. Why am I thinking my watch? <laughs> oh, hi, BDF. Welcome in. All righty. Oh, hi, Caitlin. Welcome in. Okay. Ooh, awesome. Okay. So <laughs> I, was gonna... I do. I don't know how that happened. I hardly ever use him, so I always thought it was a lady. So I don't know how that got pre-programmed that way. Ashley loves Disney. Hi, Ashley. Okay. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second, so I can put my um, cutting board back here. All right. Do you think I can trust Siri? 
Or is he going to mess with my head? Don't laugh. It wouldn't be the first time. Hello. Welcome in. Hi, that Florida feeling. Oh, yeah. This is going to be nice and spreadable. Love it. And while, um, after I mix this, I'm just going to grab my prosciutto. Now, I um, got my prosciutto at the store, and I just um, sliced it into strips like it said to do in the recipe. But I just thought it would be easier because, you know, it's kind of sticky and it sticks to the knife and everything. Um, so I just, I kind of cut it already. So there we go. The Tiki Man fan said, oh, she replaced the Patriots cutting board. <laughs> Hi, Tiki Man fan. Not really. It's out with my Blackstone um, on the back porch. It's still in use, just not here. <laughs> I would never trade my pats. <laughs> oh, why are you looking at me? The quarterback did. <laughs> oh, Richard. He's coming in with zingers today, you guys. Oh my Debbie Bernfeld is here. Hi, Debbie. I'm so glad you're here. Anna okay. O'Mara is here. Oh, hello. Okay. So hold that thought, Richard. Because I'm going to... Um, I need to melt some of this now. W -W, Max. Hi, Max. Welcome in. What should, hmm, I'm trying to figure out what I should melt this in. I need a little bowl. Yes, Ashley, that's me talking. <laughs> okay, so we need to also make, uh, the, I got this Harry and David really yummy mango chutney. So we're going to put that and we're going to put this in the microwave also for 30 seconds so it's spreadable onto our pizza. Untry it. Remember, it's a chutney. It's spicy. Good. Isn't it yummy? I think it's going to complement the prosciutto very nicely. Well, hello, Michael. Welcome in. I don't, it's, when is Siri going to tell me? Has it, I, I'm, it's going to be four minutes. Huh? I don't believe him. Oh, timer done. See what now? See in my head, I was on it, wasn't I? See, guys, I know my time. I'm almost like, it should be done. Awesome possum. Rye guy said, Rye guy. Hey, Donna, Lala is cooking. <gasps> Lala is cook is cooking and watching. Yay! I miss you guys so much. Oh my gosh, Rye Guy. I've been watching your cooking stuff on Instagram. I'm so jealous. I need you to barbecue for me. It looks incredible. Okay, guys, so the timer went off, so our pizza is coming out our crust. Now, mind you, it's not going to look brown. Because we just pre-baked it. Katie Max said you're amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so we're just going to spread everything on. I'm going to get this off, and then I'm going to use my um, my um, hot pad so I don't burn myself. I dropped my mic. Sorry, guys. Brad ate the vacation. Hi, Brad. I hope Ellie's doing well. I don't know why I'm about to talk to that 
Okay. Now this nonstick foil really is nonstick. It's sliding, but that's okay. Because you just hold it in place and you gingerly work with it. Like I said, I can't wait to have an afternoon barbecue with y'all. Oh, that would be incredible. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. That's hot. Make it blue says Donna. May I ask you if you can make a show with things that college students can make with only a fridge and a microwave? I need ideas. Sure, I will put that on my list. Absolutely, Caitlin. That's a good. Actually, that's a wonderful suggestion. Okay, so now we're going to take the prosciutto. We're going to sprinkle the prosciutto over the top. Zach, welcome in. Always good to see you, my friend. And then you just, you know, you have to get extra fancy. But, you know, if someone doesn't want prosciutto, you can leave it off a portion. Someone likes a lot of prosciutto, make theirs have more. I'm just trying to make it a little bit even so everyone gets some of everything. Now, if I remember the recipe correctly, and I'm going to refer to it again. This has a lot of prosciutto there. There we go. Okay. Oh, who knew? Cream cheese and blue cheese. Good combo. Vandalworm says, Donna, what was the last thing you cooked on your Blackstone? It will be fun watching you guys cook, do a show cooking on it. Yes, I'm going to be doing a Blackstone uh, cooking show when it cools down a little bit. The real feel here has still been over 100 degrees, uh, which is not much fun. Uh, but the last thing I cooked was, what did I make last? Do we make burgers and dogs, I think? Or was it chicken? Fajitas. Did we made fajitas. We made fajitas. That's what we made. <laughs> That's right. We made fajitas. I remember that now. All right. I just need to check this one more time because small bowl. And then the mozzarella. And then we sprinkle it with the mango chutney. Okay. Finally made it to a live. Yay! I'm so glad. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yeah, I love my Blackstone, but in this Florida heat and me do not mix too too well, especially with the humidity. Um, and when that reel feels over 100 degrees, uh, I don't know how our friends, the Walt Twins, do it. I give them props because I'd be dying. Of course, they vlog, though, so they can edit and stop when they want to take a break, I think. so. Okay, let's see. So our pie is done. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this carefully and not hurt myself. Of course, getting the other hot pad out might injure me. I don't know why it's stuck. There, okay. The little grippy thing was stuck. That's a technical term, little grippy thing. Okay. So our pie is done. Our rolls are almost done. I'm gonna give them another like three, four minutes. So I'm gonna show you guys. Where are we? This is our breakfast pie. Isn't it beautiful? This is one of my prettiest ones I've made, I think, Richard. And I've been making it for you for a couple years now. Okay. So we're going to let this cool before we try it. And now we're going to drizzle and sizzle our um, mango chutney over the um, top of the pizza. And I'm going to, I think, use a spoon to do it. And sometimes you can take them on a field trip and show them Richie. 
I mean, Ricky, Richie. Oh, so good. You know what this reminds me of, Richard? I want to know if it reminds you of the same thing. What does this kind of remind you of? A pizza we've had, though. Doesn't it remind you of the hog and honey pizza from Flippers a little bit? We get um, we have a really great pizza place uh, not too far from our house called Flippers, and they make amazing pizza. And it's like artisan, like ingredients you really wouldn't think of. And they have one called the Hog and Honey, and they use locally sourced honey, and they use sausage. And I think is it prosciutto or pancetta? I think it's prosciutto. Yeah, it's so good. I want to get every bit of that mango chutney on here. That looks pretty well coated, don't you think, Richie? Good. I'm let you like the spoon. <laughs> okay, so now this is ready to go back into the oven, but I'm going to put my cheese away. And I think I'm going to wait two more minutes because then the um, corn on blue rolls will be done. And what I'll do is I will mix the honey mustard sauce for the cordon bleu rolls while we're waiting. I think that's a good thing to be doing right now. What do you think, Richard? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think I need this big of a, well, what am I gonna mix this in? I need a small little bowl. Ooh, I know what I'll use. I'll use my bell that Sam got me. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so we're just gonna mix uh, Dijon mustard and honey. And that's just the dipping sauce. And you don't have to do that. That's just... Uh... Molly Rook says, yeah. oh well, this pizza looks delicious. Could you send me the recipe on Instagram? Absolutely. Um, make a note of that for me, Richard, so I can do that after the show. She's making dinner for her parents on Thursday. She Ooh, okay. And also, guys, if you want any of these recipes, they're in our Facebook group and the video description and on our website, Dinners with Donna. So um, you can find them there, but I will be more than happy to send this particular one to you, Molly. Steph Loves Disney wants to know if you have to pre-cook the vegetables before you use them in the breakfast pie. Um, we didn't put vegetables in the breakfast pie, but I will say if you want to put vegetables like um, bell peppers and onions, I would pre-cook them just a little bit to get some of the water out because it'll make your pie soggy um, because they have a high water content. So yeah, for sure. I need a whisk. Oh, perfect timing. So, okay, before I make the sauce, guys, I'm going to take the corn on blue rolls out, put the pizza in, and then we'll finish our sauce. And turn the timer off. Well, the down below. Oh, perfect. Okay. Let's see how these are looking. I think these still need a couple more minutes. So I'll put them in for a couple more minutes. Jennifer wants to know if the prosciutto crisps up. That's the whole point. We're hoping so. So that's that's the um, the goal here. So I'm gonna put some honey in here. Disney fan 65 says hello. Hi, Disney fan 65. Welcome in. Okay. So we're just gonna whisk this together. Make it blue. Wants to know if you ever made pizzas using non-flatbread. I sure have, and those are so delicious. So you know what else I use? Uh, I've used pita. Um, I've used bagels, English muffins. You can use almost any uh, bread form of bread and make a pizza out of it. So yummy. Glenn Hi, Glenn. Welcome in. Okay, and this is why I have like a ton of different whisks in different sizes because look, at I have this nice small one, which was perfect for making our dip. Now, I'm gonna test it because I wanna make sure the ratio of sweet to heat is correct. So, let me see. 
You think it needs more honey? Maybe a little bit. I think so. It's really spicy. Okay. FC said Donna will be happy. Brady and Kronk have already connected for two touchdowns. Woohoo! That does make me very happy. This should be right now. Okay. Debbie Barnfeld wants to know if you ever made pizza with cauliflower crust. I have not. I would like to try. I don't know if Richard would be uh, liking that. Would you? I think it's getting there. I think it still needs more honey. Don't you? Okay. JL I'm wondering if the honey is getting stuck at the bottom. I'm going to use a spoon. JL wants to know if you're getting a new iPad Pro as well. No, I can only get one, uh, one thing. And I decided I really wanted the phone, so I have an extra phone for uh, doing the show. Because uh, we use Sam's extra phone right now, and um, I feel bad borrowing her phone all the time. So now I'll, I'll just keep my one that I paid off and, and use this one as well that I'll be getting. Okay. I'm trying this one more time. I think we're there, but you tell me. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm trying. I'll rinse this off in case I need it again. Don't be fresh. I actually bought that one myself. I got it on Zoo Lily. They have good specials on um, kitchen gadgets and tools and things. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit of a cleanup, guys, so bear with me one minute. And I think the corn on blue rolls are calling us. Actually, I might need this again. Yes, I hear you. My buzzer keeps going up. Why does that go off every 10 seconds? That drives me insane. We could figure that out. Yeah, but usually it does it in 30 second intervals, not 10 second intervals. It takes you more than 10 seconds to get to the oven, for goodness sake. Okay, that was Donna's rant for the day. <laughs> Buzzy girl says, Buzzy fam says, hi girl, love the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Hello and welcome in. Okay. There we go. Now we're good. I bet you could, for sure. Yeah, you could use regular pizza crust, you could use puff pastry, but today's all about crescent rolled over for us. Okay, this is going to go into the oven, and I think I'm going to jack it up to 400 degrees. Yep. So we're going to put it at 400. For about hmm, 20 minutes. There we go. Perfect. And now we're done with these. So I'll get these out of the way. How's the chat doing, Richard? Do we have any questions? We're good? Okay, cool. Are you ready for our first tasting? Sure. 
Okay, Sam, are you gonna have some breakfast pie? There we go. Okay, I'm just going to get a stack of plates because we're going to need them today. Oh, can you do you have a phone to take a picture of the pie? <laughs> oh, hi, Kate. I got your card. I showed it earlier if you want to rewind. I loved my birthday card. Thank you so much. Okay, and then we can take a picture of the cut slice after I cut into it. I'm just going to cut small slices because we've got a lot of food to try. And did you want to grab our paddles today or not? It's up to you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to cut like a normal size so we can take a picture of the normal size piece. Okay. You want that? We can just taste from that. I'll taste from this one and then give the rest to Sam. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I don't think I saw them yet in the chat, but okay, I'm just going to take a bite and then I'm going to hand off to Sam. Mmm. Yummy. Mm-hmm. It's really good. That one never fails. It's always a hit. Here you go. <laughs> that was delicious. Okay, we also have our rolls. If you want to take a picture of the rolls for me. And then what I'll do is I'll plate one up and we can take a picture of it with the, um, what do you call it? The sauce. See if I can get one out without it looking bad. There we go. Oh, it kind of fell apart. Well, we'll just deal with the picture. You ready to try it? I'll get a knife. Oops. Okay. I'm going to cut into this and try to get a little bit of chicken, ham, and cheese, and all that good stuff. And then I'll put a little... Oops. They're a little messy, but mmm, but yummy. Mm-hmm. You use your knife and get some sauce. It's really good with the sauce. That's good. Really good. Mm -hmm. I'd eat that again. They're a little bit messy to serve. I think if I let them sit a little bit more, they'll be easier to get out of the pan. 
I thought they're there, so I might as well try it. I'm gonna have one more bite. That was pretty good. Mm. Yummy. Did you want a ham and cheese roll, Sam, or are you good for now? Okay. <laughs> Richard took the rest of it. <laughs> awesome possum. Okay. So now while our pizza is cooking, we'll move on to the next recipe. Um... I think my next recipe is going to be the crescent dogs, and they're so simple. However, I am going to get a drink of water. Got my bottle of water right here. There we go. That sauce is money, isn't it? Okay, I'm moving right along. Okay, this could not get any more simple. We have our crescent roll dough. We have the little smokies. I'm gonna move the quiche out of the way, the bacon pie. Hi, Evan, good to see you. Hey, Chris, welcome in. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that happens? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to get my um, cookie sheet prepared with foil because you know that I'm big on that. Nonstick foil, nonstick cooking spray. We've got all the nonstick stuff. Yay! Okay. Now these could not be simpler, guys. Now you can add cheese to these. You can do whatever you want. Um, but we're going to go uh, straight old school. And we're basically making pigs in a blanket. They call them mini crescent dogs on the website. But... They're basically pigs in a blanket. <laughs> I'm going to put this over here. Okay. So unwrap your crescent roll dough. We're going to bang it. And we're going to it. And we're going to get it into the triangles. And then once we get it into the triangles, we're going to cut the triangles into thirds. Okay. I'm going to flip my board over because it's a little warm from having the, um, the quiche on it. So I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to separate my triangles so it's easier to work with because you want them to be cold as, as cold as you can. Warm dough will just melt all over the place because it's got a lot of butter in it. All right, there we go. And you can use whichever little smokies you like. Um, I just used the all beef. And of course my microphone fell off again. I don't know why this mic keeps falling off, but oh. what are you gonna do? John Farrell said it must smell heavenly in my kitchen. Hi Kevin, well does it smell heavenly Richard? Yeah. You tell me. Okay, so I think we're going to do them in thirds. As best as we can. And you take your little smoky and you wrap your dough around it. And then we put them on our baking sheet. Which I'll put, yeah, I'll put over here. <laughs> Anthony the molar man. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Donna. Always looks amazing. Oh, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. Okay. 
All right. And these move pretty fast. And then you can use whatever you want to dip them in. Um, you could dip them in barbecue sauce. You could dip them into um, honey mustard, regular mustard, anything like that. I'm just going to go like that. Katie Waring says, this is my family staple. Every Christmas Eve mm -hmm. for one of the finger foods, we use... Hillshire Farm cheese smokies and sprinkle Ooh. with craft grated parm in a shaker jar. Oh, that sounds yummy. Yeah, I've made these before where I've um, put them in the barbecue sauce beforehand and then rolled them. I've done it with a sprinkling of cheese on it. Uh, you can really make it your own. You can even like top it with, you know, everything bagel seasoning and sprinkle it over the top or Parmesan or anything like that would be yummy. Yeah. And they they come out so cute. It's a nice little finger food. It's perfect for uh, tailgating, um, you know, for football watch parties, Super Bowl, all that good stuff. Alyssa and Neil say there may be an abundance of gluten here, but it's all of us. Oh, thanks, Neil. You guys are awesome. Okay. And like I said, this is really so simple. You could do it with the kids. They love rolling things up and it's um, so easy and so fun and yummy and all the good things. And if anyone uh, is watching that lives nearby and would like some leftovers, you know where to go. <laughs> so I think we'll have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> I don't think Richard's complaining about the leftovers this time, though. Are you? Not keto. <laughs> it's not keto. Hashtag not keto. Hey, Disney Freak, welcome in. Anthony, the lower man said you're only 4,000 exits from my house. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, come on down. We will feed you well. And guys, check out Anthony's channel. He does some really fun stuff on there. Um, he's, he's just such a cool guy. All right. We're in the home stretch on this one. <laughs> Kate, you're too funny. Love it. Well, it's funny you should ask, Disney Freak, because my stream, normal stream day actually falls on Halloween. So, I mean, on Halloween, we are having a bootacular time. It's going to be amazing and bootastic. <laughs> and we, have, we are going to have like a marathon and we're going to make so many things and I'm going to have some special friends joining me, and it's it's going to be pretty darn fun. So make sure you tune in on Halloween. We are going to make all the treats, and no repeats from last year. All new treats this year. So be sure you tune in. It's going to be fun. Tina, welcome in. All right. So, oh, hi, Linda. Welcome in. I've only got four of these left, so I'm just going to, you know, 
there's four. What am I going to do with four of them? Hmm? You know I'm not going to feed those to my fish. He's so cute. You haven't shown them Ricky yet. Hmm? At 4.45. Oh, is it? Oh. Well, I think I will take a break. Do you want to take a field trip and show them Ricky? I'll feed him. So he'll come to the circle. We've got five minutes left on the pizza, and then I can take it out and put the um, pigs in a blanket in. So that would be awesome. Okay, you ready, Ricky? Richie? Ricky, Richie? Oh, he's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna feed him. He's hungry. Isn't he beautiful, guys? That's Ricky. That's our beta fish. I don't understand why his food keeps falling to the bottom, some of it. That's a defective food. <laughs> I hope you guys get to see him. He's so cute. We love him. <laughs> well, hopefully you get a good look at him. He's blue and kind of purplish, and he's got a beautiful color to him. Oh, pizza's done. Good thing I checked. It's perfect. Look at that, Richie. Need a picture. And pop these in. I make these go for about 10 to 12 minutes or so. Then lower the oven temperature to 375. We did that now. And 10 minutes and let you take a picture and then I'll show that. Well, I could think you guys can see it. It's absolutely beautiful. Yep. And that prosciutto really did crisp up. Do you see that, Richie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is look at that. Ha! <laughs> could you do that? Disney World Cash beautiful fish oh thank you so much i think he's just so cute um sam's been asking for a fish for a long time and i was kind of on the fence about it because the last one we had well it was over 10 years ago but it it died <laughs> and so i was hesitant to get another one and um you know but this one we're taking really good care of him and he's not in a bedroom anymore he's downstairs in the main room so we can all look at him and enjoy him and he's now our official mascot so yay the last fish we had was fish tacos do not tell the fish we had fish tacos but we did and it was i gotta make my fish tacos for you guys sometime they are amazing okay yeah so Donna, Richie has so many names in this community. Which is his preferred title? Which is my preferred title for you or yours? Oh, well, then I defer to you. Richard. <laughs> he likes Richard. <laughs> well, you came up with our Johns. That was your own doing. Well, it's my and Rich what was my email address? <laughs> our Johns. It just popped up on Well, me. Richie was not even that's not from me you guys richie i hope you all know came from corey from corey meets world we were uh riding golf carts looking at christmas lights and uh corey said to richard he goes richie fireworks and hence richie was born and it stuck and yeah so sorry but you're richie to me <laughs> rob Fuss says we voted on Richie's name. It's Disney Legend. I agree. I like the legend. Okay. Did you get you got a picture of this, right? Katie Max says, I love it when Donna says, don't be fresh. <laughs> she says that a lot. <laughs> I 
welcome to you because you're you're fresh. What can I say? Angela Minta says Tinker John's is still my fave. I that is up there for me. I love Tinker John's, and every time I see Tink go for happily ever after, I always say if I'm in the chat, I say Tinker John's flies again. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to cut our pizza. Sam, are you going to try some pizza? Okay. I think she got full on breakfast pie. Hello, it's me. Hi, hello, it's me. We were talking about you earlier because we said your name and I said, are they here? <laughs> Did my, it fell off again. Yep. I don't know why it's not staying. Should I put it in my pocket? Sorry, guys, my mic keeps falling off, and I don't know why. Michelle the Quilter says Richie Cunningham was so funny. Yes, he was. I loved Richie Cunningham. Okay. We're going to cut this puppy up. We're going to try it, and then I'll put it in a lock and lock so I can have my cutting board back. Disney, Keith and Mandy. Hi, Keith and Mandy. Said Ricky is so cute, but now he needs a companion, a Donna fish. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, Richie, we got another one to taste. I'm going to take a small one. You picked yours. Yeah, I want a small one too because we have so many things to taste. Okay, guys, here we go. It looks yummy. You ready? Mmm. Ooh. Hot. Flavorful. The blue cheese, because it's mixed with cream cheese, it mellows out the blue cheese. And I really do like it with the mango chutney. I think that was a good choice. Yeah? Okay. We'll be enjoying this. I think as leftovers. Yep. Mmm. So good. I'm going to get a lock and lock. For the pizza. That is really, really good. I like that a lot. I'm definitely making this recipe again. This would be great, um, like for a um, party appetizer at the holidays. I would make this. That'd be yummy, don't you think, Richard? I called you Richard. Let's say fly, Richie, fly. Yeah, Richie, fly. <laughs> I love it. Mm. I got hot mango on me. <laughs> we do. I should. That'd be so nice to watch. I need another uh, lock and lock. There we go. Tasha asks, when you have these for leftovers, do you heat them in the air fryer? Or yeah, I would probably heat them in the air fryer. It's quick and it heats up really nicely and it will keep the um, integrity of the pizza crust nice and crispy so it doesn't get soggy. Um, I would just be sure to um, time manage it because you don't want the top getting overdone. That's the only thing you got to watch out for. But yeah, I would definitely, definitely do it in the air fryer. Richie, can we make? I don't know what just happened. Oh, my mic came off again. This mic's causing me a lot of issues. Maybe on the table. Oh, it came off off. 
like off of the huh okay well this is going to be tricky now well i can't do that while we're on the thing this just goes around here right there okay let's try this one more time sorry about that guys okay i think this is too loose and it's, the wire is getting caught up i've got too much um leeway okay Now we have that side to work with. I can rinse this off so I have my little cutting board. No. In fact, um, if you go back to my, um, well, the keto show is a perfect example because Richard did not like things on there and he made it very well known. Um, why is our sink making that noise? <laughs> my sink is talking. Anyhow, um, yeah, Nicholas has had times where he's not liked things. He was very polite, but I can, I can tell when he doesn't like things. And um, when we had our Star Wars um, May the 4th episode, let's just say the blue milk was not good and we were not having it. And we just, we flat out say when, when things aren't good. Because I want to be honest with you guys, and most of these recipes that I use are things I haven't made before. Um, a lot of these crescent roll ones I have made before, but like the pizza, this was my first time making the prosciutto pizza. Uh, the uh, cordon blue roll ups, that's my first time. And if I didn't like it, I would really want you guys to know so you don't waste your time trying something that's not worth your while. And that milk, remember, it cost me like what, $15 to make that stupid milk, that blue milk that came out awful? Oh, these aren't done yet. I'll put it in for another hmm, six minutes. There you go. Yeah. That was, uh, the blue milk was an epic fail. But, you know, you live and learn. And um, I, I like to try new things so that you get a, a honest and true reaction. So, okay. So now the next thing we're going to move on to and prepare is, I've got them all in order. Oh, this is going to be a good one. We are making Rotel Sausage Cream Cheese Crescent. Oh, hello. Welcome in. Okay. Sam's visiting Ricky. <laughs> okay. So this is so simple. We have, let's see, cream cheese. Okay. We have our uh, can of Rotel, which I used <laughs> right here. I got the mild. No, I got the original with tomatoes and green chilies, but I dried it out like thoroughly and squeezed all the liquid out uh, so we don't have moisture and, and making things uh, seep and everything. Um, so I did it with paper towels and then I put it in the bowl and that's what you get after a whole can. So yeah, make sure you really get the liquid out. That's important. Then we have a pound of, uh, you can use Italian sausage, breakfast sausage, um, out of the casing, of course, uh, browned up, just like you would ground beef. So we've got that. And then uh, we're going to use our crescent roll dough, of course, and uh, cream cheese. I think cream cheese. So we're going to mix everything together, I believe. Yep. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can add a can of green chilies to this. 
Um, I'm not doing that this time because we're, we're not spicy uh, people. So we're just throwing everything into a bowl. Our cooked sausage, our bar of cream cheese, and our uh, drained, very well drained can of uh, Rotel. And if you want to add chilies, if you do add a can of mild green chilies or any kind of green chilies, make sure you drain them well. We do not want extra liquid. They will mess with the integrity of the crescent roll dough. I think I'm going to try using my spurtle. So I'm going to use my spurtle here. Let's try to mix everything together. Jennifer says, I feel terrible watching John, Donna cook when I just ordered out. <laughs> Don't you dare. Shortcuts. That is a good shortcut. I use that sometimes myself. Okay. And it's important also to make sure that your cream cheese has been softened, which mine has been sitting out for a little bit, so that you can mix it well. And just fold it in and get everything well incorporated. Take your time. It's not a marathon. You don't have to race. True. Very true. What are you trying to say? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. That's it all mixed up. And now, um, okay, so for these, we're going to cut the um, crescent rolls in half. Now, if you remember for the little... Um, little smokies we used, uh, we cut it into thirds. So this time we're gonna cut the triangles in just in half. And then we're gonna put a scoop of the mixture on it and then roll it up and put it on our baking sheet. But I'm gonna get my baking sheet prepared so that we're ready to go. Okay, there we go. So here we go. We're going to get a can of our crescent roll dough out. And we've got less than a minute left on our um, mini crescent dogs, which is what they call them. I call them pigs in a blanket, but you can call them whatever you like. Little Richies. Oh, yeah, these are perfect now. Okay, let me turn that off. Get my hot pad. And while these are cooling, we'll assemble the other. Woo! And, Richie, if you want to get a picture, and then we can take, a, well, we can take a picture of them when we eat them, I guess. Doesn't matter. Mm hmm you sure can. Parchment paper works well too. Um, I just find for me the nonstick foil works even better than parchment, but that's why I use it. But it's a it's a personal thing. You can use whatever you like. And I know I'm going to have extra filling left over because this calls for two cans of uh, crescent rolls, but. We're not going to be, our family's not going to eat all that. So we're, I'm just making one. Because this will make 16 um, appetizers. And again, this is great football food. We're going to do these in batches. I'm going to do half of the dough and then the other half. And uh, 
just cut in half. ALJ said he always uses parchment paper. Yep. And Roxanne Simpson says she always uses nonstick foil. Yep. It's just a preference. Whatever, you know, makes you happy, do it. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna get a little spoon. Jennifer says she can never find nonstick foil. Really? Oh, that's interesting. It's gonna put a nice dollop of the um, sausage mixture into each one and then put them on our baking sheet. And Corey Meets World says good evening. Corey, welcome in. I hope you had a great time last night. It looked like a blast. I saw the snow on your Instagram. I was like, dang, he got to play in snow. And all I could think of was when we had that um, snowball fight, when they had that snow outside of Chick-fil-A. Do you remember that? That was so much fun. Uh, the nonstick foil, I get it usually at Walmart or Target, um, depending on where I'm at. Um, our Publix usually has it also. So, yeah, I, I usually don't have an issue finding it. But it could be a regional thing. I don't know. Amy AJC Magic is here. Hi, Amy. Welcome in, my friend. Corey said last night was something special for sure. Oh, yeah. It looked amazing. And the food looked good, too. All kinds of entertainment. And I can't wait for your um, assessment. Uh, are you doing it this Thursday, Corey, on your stream? Where you're going to talk about it? Let me know. Because I'll let everyone know. Because they really should check it out. It's must-see TV. <laughs> you need to come over sometime again, Corey, too, so we can uh, have another food challenge. I think we're supposed to do a milkshake one, aren't we, with Steve? Corey said, yes, I remember the snow that night. Nick was there, and I was throwing snowballs at him. Yes, you were. <laughs> it was so much fun. Sometimes it's nice just to be, you know, act like a kid again. I, I loved it. That was one of the best nights I've ever had, and um, I'll never forget it. He said it'll be a separate stream from a Thursday night stream. Gotcha. I know that... Um, Streaming from the village is, is quite challenging because the signal is so spotty. Herschel Lenny says, hi, guys. Hey, Margie. Welcome in. We're going to have leftover filling, but you know what? This is going to freeze really well. And if we like these, they will be a... Um, and I don't see why we wouldn't like these, but I can use them for um, Thanksgiving appetizers. Ashley loves Disney, says, Donna, we need Corey to wear a kilt to Epcot. <laughs> oh, Corey, I, are you listening? The people have spoken. They want you to wear a kilt to Epcot. I'd like to see you perform with off kilter. <laughs> that would be really cool. That was one of the best um, concerts I've seen in quite a while. Had, we had um, the we were good fortune to go to uh, the Diaz family reunion benefit and give kids the world uh, September 9th and 10th. And Corey actually got to also go to the um, Star Wars event on the 11th. I didn't go to that one, but um, I was very blessed and invited as media. Um, you know, I don't like to toot my own horn or anything, but I was invited. So I was like, oh, yes, I really do want to go. And um, it was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. And um, we got to see Off Kilter, uh, Mulch, Sweat, and Shears, which are uh, now American Martian. They changed their name. And we got to see Yeehaw Bob. And um, 
the uh, new Mickey Mouse Club from 1989. And um, it was just a wonderful two days of, of guest speakers and um, just a really, really nice opportunity. I met Kellen and his wonderful family. Um, I got to talk again with uh, Pam from Give Kids the World, um, the head of Give Kids the World. She's incredible. Um, so it was just a, a lovely time and just so nice to see everyone uh, doing some good. And the Diz always, you know, does their auction for uh, Give Kids the World. And it was really awesome. Said, the guilt is happening. Stay tuned. Ooh. Tasha said it was fun to spend time with you at the event. Yes, we saw uh, uh, Sean and Tasha at the event, and oh my goodness, it was just so nice. There were lots of guest speakers. Um, we got to see uh, Tony Baxter, um, Tom Nabby, of course, and um, just so many. It was just incredible. And to hear um, all they had to say, Jody Benson, um, the list was like endless. It was just crazy. It was such a good time. But I still have to say my highlight was meeting Kellen and his family and uh, talking to Pam. That's always such a highlight for me. Um, she's so uh, kind and so sweet. I love her. She's awesome. All right. Those are ready to go in the oven. So they're gonna bake at 375 for 15 minutes or until golden brown. So in they're gonna go. Fifteen minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna put the rest of why is that doing that? My sink is like making gurgling sounds. I think maybe I need to put the disposal on for a minute. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry for the noise. Okay. Sorry, guys. That should be better now. The, the sister Gigi is here. <gasps> Gigi, welcome in. Oh, I miss you so much. I'm so glad you were able to stop in. I hope you're doing well. I hope school's going well. We miss all of you. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest of this away. And then um, we can move along. But you know what I want to see? I'd like to see Corey and Steve in kilts doing that little dance that Off Kilter did across the stage with the leg kicks, and then they go the other way. I want to see that and do it in sync. Now, that would be a feat. Jennifer Piccolo said, I wish I could have seen the 90s MMC. I used to see them on the back lot when I worked at the studio. Oh, they are incredible and they're so talented. It was such a treat to see them. And the um, their segment of the um, of the week of the weekend or of the convention or whatever it's called was really moving because they gave uh, awards and things. Um, and Kellen got one, and so did Pam, uh, for being humanitarians and what they do uh, for everybody. And it was just incredible to watch, honestly. Such a privilege, privilege to be a part of that. Okay. This is ready to go back in the fridge. But, yeah, it's funny because I remember watching the, um, the new Mickey Mouse Club back in 1989, and um, I, I felt like a kid again see, seeing all of them. And uh, Corey, did you know who they were, or did you not remember them? I don't know if you grew up with that or not. Corey's young, a lot younger than me. So. <laughs> okay, it's time for another uh, tasting. Mm. 
Sam, do you want a mini uh, crescent dog? Did she say yes? We can take a picture of that. And then I'm going to wash off my board again. Okay. I don't think this is going to be good. <laughs> you ready? I don't think I like them. Mmm. Mm. Yummy. Now, I will say, I've also made crescent hot dogs where you take the hot dog wrap it in cheese in the crescent and it's a big hot dog i like these because they're bite-sized oh richie's uh taking off with them <laughs> sam <laughs> okay i'm gonna put them on a plate like a big plate i think Kevin, I graduated to running stuff behind the scenes since Nick has been gone. What happened? Kevin Sparrow said, I thought Richie was in charge of doing dishes. Well, yeah, I've been trying since he's had to take over tech. I try to wash as I go and put things in the dishwasher so his load is a little bit less heavy. I think I've been doing pretty good. I think I might steal one more of these. They're good. No, I'm just going to have you put them away. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see what's next on our list. Oh. These are going to be really yummy. I don't think Richie's going to want any of these. No, I don't think so. Brooke said if she was here, she'd do dishes. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, Molly. Oh, so, Richie, we're to the part of the show where you're not going to like what I'm making at all. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> um. Actually, he's going to love it. I'm being really silly because we are making caramel peanut butter cup stuffed crescent rolls, guys. Yes, we are stuffing the crescent rolls with a peanut butter cup and caramel. It's going to be epic. I'm going to get my baking sheet ready. going to get my peanut butter cups and my caramels, which I already um, I've unwrapped, so that it's just easier. Isaac and, Nail is here, so if you want to sing, he'll put the lyrics in. Isaac! Yay! I'm so glad you're here. Now, this could not be simpler, but more delicious. I mean, three of my favorite things. Crescent rolls, peanut butter cups, and caramel. And then... When it, they come out of the oven, I'm going to sprinkle them with powdered sugar. It doesn't say to do that, but I want to make it look a little bit more pretty. And um, you could also use like a drizzle of caramel or a drizzle of melted chocolate. So good. Okay. I'm going to get a paper towel. I got some cream cheese on the counter. There we go. All right. Ready? There we go. I love it. Okay. I don't think there are going to be any leftovers of these in this house. Uh, okay. 
discover the message once they get the same sample. Hi, Roger. Um, you never know. <laughs> okay, so easy peasy, guys. We've got our unwrapped caramels. We have our unwrapped peanut butter cups. Peanut butter cup, caramel. And then you just make sure everything gets wrapped and you don't want anything showing. So you want to work it, work it, work it so everything's encapsulated like so. Okay, so you have like a little ball. We're going to do that with all the rest of them. Put them on our baking sheet and then we're going to bake them. Can it get more simple? And yes, you could make these in the air fryer. But I'm saving the air fryer for another recipe we're making. You said peanut butter and caramel. That sounds amazing. Mm hmm Yep. And, I mean, you, I've seen them made before with just the peanut butter cup. But then when I saw this recipe with the caramel, too, I was like, oh, stop it. That just puts it over the top. Hi, Amanda. Welcome in. These are going to be so delicious. Nope, I found it online. <laughs> I wanted to do something um, with peanut butter cups. And I had seen the peanut butter cup recipe, but I wanted to make it a little bit different. And that's when I found this one with the caramel. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Just the regular snack size. Yep. Not the minis. It's a full size snack cup. Okay, we're getting there, guys. I just said, doing well. Just got back from the Jaguars game. Oh, awesome. We lost, but it's okay. Aw, I bet it was still fun, though. That's so awesome, Isaac. I'm so glad you're in our chat today. That always makes me so happy. Sebastian the Crab is here. Hey, Jeanette. Welcome Can't in. Can't believe she forgot you were streaming, but glad she could catch a bit of it. Oh, no worries. Oh, this is looking really nice. And it's really important to make sure none of your chocolate is exposed because it will just ooze out of the middle. And you don't want that happening. So just take your time. Make sure everything's covered. There we go. It was like a little pie, wouldn't you say, Richard? Well, I mean, doesn't it look like a little pie? That's what I meant. You're being fresh again. Watch it. You won't get any dessert. <laughs> Don't be fresh. 
Okay. So we got these all ready to go. The um, Rotel Bites are almost done. They have two minutes left. So while we're waiting on those and we're going to switch these out, I'm going to clean up just a tad and then um, I'll get right back with you guys. I shouldn't put you very long. Jennifer said they'd be good with a scoop of homemade ice cream. Oh, now you're talking. I like how you think, Jennifer. See, that's why we're friends. We think the same way. Okay. There we go. And the rest of this stuff can just go in the dishwasher. So Richard, out of everything we've made so far, uh, has anything surprised you that you didn't know if you'd like it? Yeah, that pizza. Yeah. And out of everything we've had so far, what was your favorite? The breakfast pie. Okay. Well, I know breakfast is your favorite. So. There really wasn't that much in the sink. It just looked like there was. Jennifer said, that's right. Our brains and hearts are wired the same. That's right. You know it. All right. Our rotel mites are going off, but I'm rinsing out some dishes. So I'll rinse out real fast and then grab the rotel mite. Okay. And then these are going to bake at 375 for. 10 to 12 minutes. And the Rotel Bites look absolutely beautiful. Here we go. Oops. Oh, there we go. So let them cool just a touch before we eat them so we don't burn ourselves. I'll put the um, peanut butter cups in the oven. Do it for 12 and we'll try it again and see what it looks like. And then we're also going to get our another sheet of foil. And while the tamper cups are baking and the rotel cups are cooling. Um, we're going to make our next one, which is, I believe, easy, easy cherry danish. So I'm going to do is move the Rotel Bites over there we go, to the cooling rack and put this over here. Now, I'm going to grab my recipe. Yeah, we are making a lot of things today, but that's okay. We've got this. All right. So for this one, we need our can of crescent rolls, four ounces of cream cheese, four tablespoons of powdered sugar, a can of cherry pie filling, and then for the glaze, more powdered sugar and milk. Pretty simple. All right. All right. 
Now, before I unroll the dough, I know it says to do that first, I'm gonna mix the cream cheese and the uh, powdered sugar. So we need four ounces, which is a half of a bar. So I need a knife. All right, easy peasy. So I'm just gonna cut this in half, maybe. There we go. There we go. Is it me or is it getting really dark outside? <laughs> Storms are coming. Ooh. Okay. So I'm gonna repurpose my bowl here. Let's get it dry. And we're going to mix the cream cheese and two tablespoons, no, four tablespoons, I'm sorry, of powdered sugar. So mix that really well. Classy Disney Mom. Hey, Classy Disney Mom, welcome in. It's so good to see you. All right. Need my tablespoon. We got our powdered sugar right here. Well, hello, Maria. Welcome in. One. Kathleen Stauffer says, everything tastes better with cream cheese. I agree, Kathleen. <laughs> Three and four. Okay. I'm going to get a fork to mix this. And I, I, I mean, it's not that much of a mixture to get involved with a um, like hand mixer, I don't think. Okay. Cream cheese filling for the Dana. Yum. Oh, that looks wonderful. Okay. So there's that. Now, when we're doing this one, we don't want to unroll our crescent roll dough. Very important here. Do not roll out your crescent roll dough with this recipe because we're making little danishes. And they used to, and I don't see them in the stores anymore. They used to sell crescent roll rounds where they came that way and they would separate into a round. That would be so nice to have for this recipe. But I haven't seen those in a couple of years, so I don't think they make them anymore. Tommy Jackley says, hi, Donna. It's the Jackley family. Oh, hi. Welcome in. That's Kellen's family. Oh. Welcome in. We show Kellen's paintings earlier. You guys are going to have to rewind and go back. Um, and I talked about you guys. Show a little bit and I can see them. Oh, yeah. Can you see them? Yep. Yeah, we have them on display. I'm so proud of them. I'm making, I told everybody I'm making a uh, Kellen wall. I'm going to hang them on the wall. And it's, that's going to be dedicated to Kellen's paintings. And I'm so excited to have them. They're just, I'm going to treasure them forever. So we are making our Danish now, our easy cherry Danish. So do not unroll. We're going to go on here. Can I see what I'm doing? Move this bowl. Okay. That good? All right. So we're going to take our nice sharp knife and we're going to cut these into eighths. So I like to go in half and then half and then half. So we're going to go like this, like this. And over there, let me know if you like to listen to music when you go. Always. Richard, do I like music? <laughs> she never stops singing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't help it. I love to sing. I love music. It makes me so happy. Okay. Kay Atwood said she's been ninja watching. Kay, we've been thinking of you. I'm so glad you're here. I hope we're able to make a smile today. Okay, so what you're going to do is take, see they're like round like this? So it's going to take them on our baking sheet and then we're going to just press them down. And that's going to be the base of our Danish. Um, Jackie said, oh, you're the best. Sorry, we're late. Thanks. Don't you ever worry. I'm just so glad you're here. We're having lots of fun. The Joseph family. Hi, Joseph family. We're excited to see you make these. I have the recipe in the evening today. That's awesome. So yeah, you just gently, you know, press them down. And I always use my nonstick foil so that they'll come off easy peasy when we're done. And they're already starting to look like the shape of a Danish, which is nice. Look at that. I do. I really do. It really is. It, it soothes the soul and it heal. I really believe that music is, has a healing um, property to it. It just really, it makes my mood so much better. I, I just love music. All right. So now I believe we're going to put the cream cheese on it and then the cherries, but I'm just going to read this and make sure I don't do it wrong. Yep, we're going to put the cream cheese mixture on each one. So we're going to divide our cream cheese mixture evenly over the rounds that we have. All right. So just go over each one. And you can get technical, it says cheese, two teaspoons, but I mean, I'm eyeballing it. it just, I just make it even. You don't have to like be precise, I don't think. I mean, of course, don't put like one big glop on it, one and not on the others. <laughs> but, but if you get it sort of, you know, even, evenly distributed, you should be good. So yummy. More on that one than on this. More here. Some more there. Some more here. Just kind of spread it out a little bit. There we go. I still have a little more left. So I'm just going to go back and anywhere where I think needs a little bit more attention we'll say we'll put it back there we go mm. you don't want that <laughs> well <Yeah>. richie approves <laughs> okay so now it, it gets even more simple we just put our cherry pie filling on top now you can make any kind of you know danish you want you can use peach pineapple strawberry the sky's the limit no worries whatever you like you you use on this okay this is messy molly says i always put ed sheeran on when i'm in the kitchen cooking with my mom love it Okay, so now we're just going to put a little bit of the pie filling on each one, and I'm just checking the oven um, because our peanut butter cups are almost ready, I think. Okay, so top the cream cheese with a teaspoon of cherry pie filling, and then we're going to bake them for 12 to 14 minutes or until golden brown. So here we go. Jennifer said, we've used peach, apple, and cherry. Cherry mm -hmm. seems to win out because it's Tony's favorite. 
Oh yeah, I can imagine. And Katie said she can't wait to make all these recipes. Oh yeah, and these are so pretty. This would be so nice like on Christmas morning with brunch. Or tomorrow morning. It could be. Could be dessert. I am so going to have pie filling left over. <laughs> okay. We're going to check our peanut butter cups. Turn our timer off. Well, they need a little bit more. Maybe like two minutes, maybe. But these are done now. These get to go in the oven as soon as the peanut butter cups come out. So what I guess we'll do now is we'll have another tasting. Did you get a picture of these already for the gram? I'll put some on a plate. They look good. I'll try to pick the pretty ones. We always got to get a picture for the gram. See, now this is what happened before we used the multi camera setup. I just had my phone on me and I would take, but I use my phone for streaming now, so I can't do it. So I'm like, Richie, picture. Richie, fireworks. <laughs> okay, you ready? This is the sausage and rotel and cream cheese. Mmm. Oh, my. I really like these. It would help. Really good. <laughs> My belly was in shock. Mmm, <laughs> those are a winner. Mm hmm. They're amazing. Sam, you want one? I think we filled her up. Let's see. I'm going to try to get them in on. Lock and lock so that they're easier to put away. And Jackley family, if you're still listening, leftovers, I'll hook you up. Message me. <laughs> That's awesome. Rob, you're too funny. I love it. I use mild Italian, but you can use breakfast sausage or whatever you like, turkey sausage. Ooh, these look beautiful. Okay, I'm going to put the Danish in. I'm going to put the timer on about 12 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is finish these up with a dusting of a powdered sugar. I have my, oh, here it is. Okay. Powdered sugar is over here. Okay. Are we on stove cam, Richie? Yes. Okay. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the, um, make it rain. We're going to make it snow. Look at this, guys. So easy, so beautiful. Okay. I'll have you on picture detail, Richard. Uda Lally Lane said, Donna, do you think you could use cinnamon roll dough for the Reese's caramel pies, or do you think there'll be too many flavors? 
No, I think you could. I mean, if you like cinnamon, and you can even use the flavored kind, like they have pumpkin spice, they have strawberry, they have all different kinds of um, the Pillsbury um, cinnamon roll dough. So yeah, play around with it and, and do it, you know, do whatever you like. I love mixing it up like that. Okay. You're not gonna like the next thing we're making either. Have you ever heard of a crescent ring? He's never heard of a crescent ring. I'm sure all of you have. It's a beautiful wreath shaped kind of um, thing that you make out of crescent roll dough and you fill it. Um, I've made them savory with taco filling, sloppy joe filling, uh, tuna. Um, it, it, like It's like a tuna melt the way I make it, it's so good. This one, we are making an apple cream cheese danish. <laughs> Don't be so enthused, Richard. My goodness. Okay. Let's see. So for this one, we only have three recipes left. Can you believe it? Yeah, but we've made almost 10 things. Okay, so we need two tubes of crescent roll dough, a package of cream cheese, a half a cup of granulated sugar, vanilla extract, a can of apple pie filling, caramel sauce, which I gotta get out of the fridge. There we go. And powdered sugar and two tablespoons of milk. And all we're gonna do for that one is we're gonna lower our heat when that comes out to 350. We're gonna open our tubes of crescent roll dough. We're gonna make our ring. And then, I don't know why it doesn't say to mix the cream cheese, sugar, and vanilla ahead of time because I like having that all prepared. So I'm gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the hand mixer out for this one because we're doing a whole package of cream cheese. All right. Cream cheese, sugar. And how much sugar did I say? I said a half a cup. A half a cup and a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Now, you guys know me, and I always say what? One extract I do not measure with is my vanilla because I like extra. <laughs> but don't do it with any, uh, and I always say this too, I do not do it with any other extract because they're so powerful but vanilla you can get away with i double it usually the amount of vanilla because i like it so much okay there's our sugar perfect and here's our vanilla extract i'm going to add that there we go and now we'll get our hand mixer. Okay. Was in there right? Yeah. Okay. Always do it on your lowest speed because we don't want things flying around the kitchen because then that's just something you'll have to pick up later. I'm just going to mix this really well. And we're making kind of like what we did for the Danish, um, the cherry Danish, but we added the vanilla this time. And instead of powdered sugar, we used granulated. So a little different. But the filling's basically going to taste the same, except it'll have more vanilla. 
which I, you know, you could have done that with the cherry uh, mini danishes as well. But it's totally up to you what you like to do. And also you could have added maybe a drop of almond extract, but I would just like such a touch because that's a little, a little almond extract goes a long, long way. This is nice and creamy and smooth. Looking good. Okay. There we go. That was that. Easy peasy. Okay, I'm going to move my sugar back over here. Get my apple filling ready to go. doesn't want to stay but it's not behaving sorry guys okay so we're gonna get two cans of our crescent roll dough now move this bowl aside so you can see what I'm doing the vanilla we're done with for now and crescent roll dough okay Here we go. And this could not be simpler, but it makes such a wonderful presentation. I cannot believe how dark it is out there. <laughs> it's like crazy dark. There we go. Okay. Oh, this one's a sheet. Oh, well. That's okay. I'll have to use this for something else. I'm going to roll this back up, and we're going to use that for our pumpkin thing that we're doing in a minute. But what I'll do is, can you get me a, some wax paper, Richard? And I'll do it that way. I grabbed a uh, sheet instead of a, oh, instead of a, you know, Let's see. I think I may have run out of cans of crescent roll dough. How did that happen? Okay. No worries. We've got this. Thank you. So I'll roll that up and we'll use it for our pumpkin um, air fryer pastries that we're going to make. Let's roll it up. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it like this. I will unroll it and then roll it. Have another sheet. Thank you. And then I'll just roll it. Like that. And then it won't stick together, and it'll be good to use. Okay, I don't know how I didn't end up with enough cans of crescent roll dough, but that's okay. No worries. So, we'll start again. We have our, this one is perforated, and that's what you need for the ring. Now, if I didn't have it, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. I could have taken a pizza cutter and cut it into the triangles, but that would take time. And I've got two cans of crescent roll dough here, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. We have an extraterrestrial visitor. 
And they said, I flatten the crescent roll dough and put sage sausage on it, and roll it up and cut it sideways, and put it in the oven. Excellent breakfast sausage roll. Ooh, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Said, it's the first time they've been watching these videos. Really cool. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And you want to overlap these a bit. And that's going to come out in 12 seconds. Four, three, two, one. That looks like it could go a little bit more. We'll put it in for like two more minutes. There we go. Okay, so we're going to open our other can. I forgot to unwrap it first. Mm. Not having the other can threw me off. But that's okay. We've got this. Boom. There we go. Okay. Oh, thanks, Richard. why this said to use two cans of crescent roll dough. This seems like an awful lot of dough. I'm just going to go until my pan's full because that's looking mighty full to me. And I'm going to cut. I'll use this and cut the edge off. There we go. Yeah, that looks mighty full. Go here. I don't know, that looks good to me. I'll put one maybe here. There we go. Okay. Cool. So now, what, what we're going to do is, let's see. Okay, preheat oven, done that in a circle with the wide ends overlapping. Yep, yep, did that. Okay, so now we're going to put the pie filling, caramel sauce, and then the cream cheese. Yep, okay. So basically we're layering again. So we get our apple pie filling. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. So how do we get this open now? With a can opener? Will it work? With a pull top? We'll see. The pull tab broke off, guys. Um, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see if this works. Yep, it worked. Yay. Okay. There we go. So we're just going to spoon the apples and then all around in the ring part here.
looking good. Okay. All right. So now that's that. I rinse this off. And now we're going to drizzle it with the caramel sauce. Which I should have. All right. I'll just use a spoon. We have a $5 super chat from Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Hey, Don, I'm just saying hi. First time I've watched one. Oh, welcome in. We're glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to put the um, cream cheese mixture over. And this is going to be really full. Sorry, guys. Okay. There. We're done with that. Okay. So now what you want to do is wrap your points gently around and tuck them under. And we'll have a ring. And this one's going to be messy. I can tell already. Because I think they gave me a really weird proportion. Because that seemed like a lot of apple pie filling. But we're going to go with this and see if it kind of bakes up. But you can see how it makes a beautiful ring like that. Nice, huh? Yeah. Perfect. So now this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 20 to 22 minutes or until golden brown. Okay, so Richard, it's time for another tasting. Your favorite. Hi, Christine. Hi, Donna. Sorry I'm late. I've been celebrating my mom's 80th birthday. Happy birthday to your mom. That's incredible. I love it. Do you want to get a picture of one of these on the thing? Sure. I need a plate for mine. I have to eat the whole thing? <laughs> yes. Get rid of the prep cam. <laughs> um, okay. Don't they look pretty? I like it with the um, powdered sugar on it. Okay, ready?
Oh my goodness. Mm. Wow. That's, That's really good. Really good. Mm. So good. Do the caramel. Mm. And those are so easy to make. Wow. I'm really happy with those. That'd be a great way to use a Halloween candy. Okay. I'm going to get this bowl ready because I need to make a glaze for our Danish. Mr. Roger Elizabeth says, hey Donna, do you do guest taste testers? <laughs> I always have guest taste testers. They're always welcome. Yep. We've had lots of guest taste testers. Some from near, some from far. So the next thing we're going to do is glaze our Danish. Which is super simple. We're just going to take some um, confectioner's powdered sugar, some milk, and a touch of vanilla. Hey, it's Kellen. Those look so yummy. I know, so good. Kellen. Yay, Kellen. You gotta come over and get some. I've got extras. Just let me know. Okay, so now we just need um, some milk and some vanilla. And yes. Yes, Callan, we have extra, so please let me know if you guys want some. We're not far at all. Okay, it's so just a drop of milk. Touch it. Yay! I love it. Okay, so we're just going to mix this up real fast. And we may need to add a little more milk, depending on what kind of consistency we're getting here. But we think we'll be good. Don't want it too thick. Don't want it too thin. I think we might need a little more milk. But not much. And just a touch. All right, look at that. Now you're talking, look at that. So now we can drizzle and she sizzle. Right, Richie? Okay, guys, this is going And um, I'm actually going to use that same glaze. Is the same glaze we're putting on the apple uh, Danish when it comes out. So we'll be good to go. Touch of cleanup. Mm. 
Okay. So we only have two more recipes to go, and they're pretty simple, most of them. Well, one of them. And the other one is an air fryer recipe, so that's going to be awesome. I'm going to leave the milk and the powdered sugar here because we're going to need it for the apple danish, so we'll leave that there. Um, I'm going to need some brown sugar, and we're going to need... good kitchen music. It's kind of slinking around the kitchen. <laughs> All right. Hey, Josh, welcome in. Great to see you. We've got our apple. We're going to get our cheddar cheese, which is in here somewhere. Okay, where'd it go? That's sharp white cheddar. We're going to use white cheddar because I don't know where the orange cheddar went to. Although I could use the slices. I might just double these up. We'll do that. We've got this. Okay. This is going to go so fast, this one. You won't believe it. So we need to just cut the apple into slices, which we will do. And I already washed it before I put it in the fridge. And I'm, I'm leaving the peel on because I like that texture, but you can definitely take it off if you'd like to. We're going to see how many slices of apple we get out of this apple. And that's how many um, we'll make. So no worries there. Josh said it wouldn't go fast if he were cooking it. It's <laughs> like John from COP when he cooks. Oh, Josh, I bet you do just great. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're supposed to get like 16 out of this. We're close. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll cut that in half. I'll find this thicker slice and cut that in half. There we go. Yay. So now we're going to take these apples and we're going to. Um, Toss them with a tablespoon of brown sugar. And I had peanut butter cups in here, so sugar and sugar. Can't go wrong with that. So I'm going to put the tablespoon of sugar in here. Um, and that will also prevent some browning so we don't have that going on. Oh, I already got my brown sugar over here. Disney Tracy says, I think I want to stay at Donna's house when I come back to Disney next year. Ah, I love it. That would be awesome. Okay. So just going to cut this open because the new bag of brown sugar. And we're going to sprinkle roughly a tablespoon in here. And be careful not to put too much. And that's about right. And back you go. There we go. So now I'm just going to put the lid on this and shake to coat. And that's why I love these screw top lids, and my lock and locks and all that good stuff. And I don't know if I was supposed to put the pie, if I was supposed to put anything in here. Was I supposed to put anything in here? Let's see. Uh, no. Toss the brown uh, sugar with the apples. Oh, and a pinch of salt. I'm glad I checked that. Sarah Binkowitz says, hi, I love watching you cook. Oh, thanks, Sarah. That's so kind of you. I like cooking for you guys. It's a lot of fun for me. Patty the Pooh wants to know where you get your love for cooking. Oh, Patty. I think it's something I was kind of born with, but I have to give credit to my grandma, my aunt, my mom. Um, 
I was cooking with them since I can remember um, and watching them. And I was always an observer too, before I was old enough to use the stove and stuff. I would watch everything they did. And I think it just stuck in my head. And I just remember um, in my family anyway, food represented hospitality and it was a way of showing love to everybody. And that's what I love most about it is this is how I show people I care. Um, I love making things for people and showing people how to do the things I do in the kitchen. And it's just, um, it's love for me. Okay, these are pretty well coated now. That's good. All right, so now, let's see. This is my, this is another dough sheet. But what I do is cut it into triangles. I'm not going to fret about it. Neil said, Donna, Alyssa has the gluten problem, not me. Well, Neil, you know how to get to my house. <laughs> Come grab a Danish. Okay. So now, like I was saying, I inadvertently bought an extra dough sheet instead of a can of crescent rolls. Not a problem. What we're gonna do is just roll it out and then we're gonna cut it into the triangles that we need for this recipe. So, but I will say I'm in a bit of a jam because I need to move this stuff out of the way so I have my big cutting board so I can roll everything out. Okay. The milk and everything can go back here. Where'd my, oh, the glaze is over there. Got it. Yeah, no, you're good. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't messing anything up there. Josh says he can actually bake chocolate chip cookies with mom's recipe. I love it. That's awesome. I bet Jane made really, really good chocolate chip cookies. I know they're your favorite, Josh. We made um, crescent rolls stuffed with peanut butter cups and uh, caramel. They were so good. Hey, Ron and Meredith, welcome in. I hope you guys did good with your yard sale this weekend. It looks like you had a lot of neat stuff. I wish I lived closer. I probably would have bought stuff from you. Okay, so now we're going to roll this bad boy out. And... We're just going to make our own crescent rolls. So we're going to cut like this. Okay. And then like this. And like this. And then I'm just going to, instead of scoring it that way, I'm just going to kind of guesstimate here. And we'll just make as many apples as we can with these. And this is such an easy recipe. If I could figure out how to put in the cheese. My hands are a little greasy from the um, crescent rolls. I'll get scissors. I love when it says just tear here and it doesn't tear. But that's kind of because my hands are kind of greasy from the crescent rolls. Let's see if this works. There we go. There we go. Yay. We get it. Okay, so I'm going to, because, you know, these are crescent rolls, I'm going to fold it into like a triangle shape so that it fits there. And then we're going to take one of our apple slices and we're going to roll it up. And then we're going to wrap it in bacon. Yes, my hands are ugh, too greasy and Richard left. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't want to open. I got it. Okay, we're good. But I do need to get a cookie sheet. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to move these, Richard, um, onto a plate or something so I can put more foil on it. That's the only thing about making so many things is I run out of room. I need a McMansion. <laughs> I'm a cooking mansion. 
So I'm just gonna put um, these on a plate, guys, and reline it so we can bake our apples. I'll be just a second. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay. Oh, I got powdered sugar on me. Well, you could have helped. <laughs> Okay, got it. All right. No worries. Just wipe it off. Seriously? You just like laughing at me, don't you, Richard? Is it crazy to say Is that cheese? I don't just put on there. It is. It's cheddar cheese, and um, my mic just went pouring somewhere. It's on the floor. Thank you. <laughs> Say that again. Okay. There. I think it's better. Um, yes, this is cheddar cheese. You can... Really? It's not staying. Richard, can you help me with this thing? Unhook it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. This microphone really bites. I don't know why it does that, and it's been doing it all the time. It doesn't, doesn't stay put. Very temperamental thing. But that's okay. We deal with it. All right. So I was wrapping my thing and then the microphone fell off. So here's the apple. And oh, I've got to wrap it in the bacon. I forgot. So we'll wrap these up and then we'll wrap them in the bacon. Bacon? Mm hmm. Neil said his dad used to cook during the Korean conflict at Fort Bragg. Oh, wow. He used to make chicken soup by the ton. Really? That's impressive. Okay. Take a cheese and an apple. I'm going to roll. cheese and an apple and we're gonna roll because this is how we what this is how we roll right well yeah <laughs> okay well i'm beating We'll see if that's done. I don't think it's going to be done because it was super duper thick. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit more. Probably like five minutes. There we go. Cool. Like it's just time to finish this. Okay. That's right. You know it. See, I like how you guys think. And thank you guys for sticking with me. I know sometimes it can get tedious when you're cooking and baking and have some downtime. So hopefully we entertain you and keep your attention. I'm going to go until I run out of apples. Yeah, 
Again, this is not one that I have made before. So we'll see how this turns out. But it looked really interesting to me, the apple and the cheddar, which of course is a uh, classic combination, but then with the bacon um, thrown into the mix seemed very different to me. So we'll see if we like it. Hey, Lori Jean, welcome in. Okay. And now see, we used the dough sheet, but we made our own crescent rolls out of that. So I think we did pretty darn good. Jennifer said, I think I like the idea of buying these sheets and then using square cookie cutters to cut them exact size you need. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Neil said, Donna, there's nothing tedious about the head chef. <laughs> you are too kind. Thank you, my friend. Okay. I hope you enjoy the music. I'm liking the music today. Okay, how did that happen? We have one apple left. Mmm. <laughs> it's good with brown sugar and salt. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to get our bacon, ready cooked bacon. Should be open. Maybe my open one is down here. I don't know where my open one went. Okay, so now we're going to take these and wrap each one with a slice of pre cooked, um, ready cooked, fully cooked bacon. Easy peasy. This would be a great, like, after-school snack, I think. Another fun one for the kids to make. Alex Gray says, hi, Donna. Hi, Alex. Welcome in. And we're just going to wrap them like that and put them on our baking sheet. Janie B said the music very well. Oh, thanks, Janie. I, I enjoy it. Now we're getting to that um, point where I'm going to have to hurry because I've got um, that thing coming out of the, the um, Danish ring. So what I'm going to do is move this here. There we go. Then I have a place to put it. How's it flip? Ah, uh, it's it's there. I'm hanging in there. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna take the Danish out first and then I'll do finish wrapping. Oh, oh wow, Richard. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. What do you think? No. Like I said, my local friends, I could use some help with these leftovers. Hmm? 
I know. Well, it's just kind of like dinner and lunch wrapped into one for me. <laughs> so I kind of nosh as I go along. Okay, I need a few more pieces of bacon. So I'll go get that. Now I had do, 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 do. Josh said, I wish I could come up. I'm beat after the crazy week I've had. Aww. LOL. It's a good week, but crazy. Oh, I hear you, Josh. Well, hang in there. Hopefully things will get better. But it's good that it was a good busy week and not a bad busy week. Because bad busy is not good. <laughs> I bet um, I bet that Liam would like these apple things. It'd be yummy. I don't know if Liam likes bacon, but I bet he'd like it maybe without the bacon. I know Liam likes pizza. We still need to get together and make pizza. Okay, why does that not want to stay? What's it doing? Really? Huh. Oh, sorry, guys. Let's see if I can get this to go. I'll use this bacon to stick on this one that didn't have hardly any bacon. There. And a leftover piece for me. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I don't think I've ever been in my room with a chicken pot pie, but it sounds delicious. But I did sneak a piece of bacon <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Let's get this cleaned up just a bit, shall we? And now this says to bake it at 375 for 12 minutes or until golden brown. Things have been taking longer, so I'm going to put them in for 15 We'll see how that does. Josh said, oh, yeah, he loves apple. Aw, Liam. He's the apple of my eye, that Liam. And yeah. all things fun is here. Hey, all things fun, little brother. Good to see you. Okay. Into the oven we go. 15 minutes. Steve, you need to come over here and help us eat all this food. Uh-huh. Don't tell Cody, though. Yeah, we won't tell Cody. Shh. Okay. Well, good morning, Cricket. Welcome in. Okay, I'm going to wash down my board, guys. It's going to get a little loud, probably. And um, then we can try the Danish. And then I can glaze the other Danish. And make the last recipe. Yep. Oh. 
fake Steve in my chat. Who can you get, Sam? Oh, Emily. Thank you, mods. You rock. So fake Steve, you cannot come help a piece of food. No, you cannot. And I will say this. Um, look, you guys who are making the fake accounts, I know you think it's fun and stuff, but it's really just ridiculous. And please don't do it. It just is annoying. <laughs> and we have to hide you. And I don't like having to do that, but my mods are on top of things. So good job, mods. And if my real little brother is listening, we love you. And you are welcome to come and, and partake in the food. <laughs> but not fake Steve. <laughs> I thought he wasn't around today. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. You want to go half seas on a Danish? Okay. Mm -mm. Josh is in the chat. You have to do it Liam style. Sure. That was for you, Liam. Okay. You ready for a picture? Take my picture. Not my picture, the Danishes. <laughs> It's getting so dark outside. Oh my gosh. It's pretty. Might have to have my own. <laughs> so here's what it looks like, guys. Pretty. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Really yummy. It looks yummy. Mm, that's so good. Wow. That's yummy. I would make these again. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, make those again. There you go. Mmm. <laughs> that was delicious. Wow, that's all I can say. That we will definitely be making again. Okay, so I'm gonna glaze, I'm gonna make a glaze for the um, apple danish. Then we have one more recipe and we'll be done. Um, oh, I put all the glaze stuff over here, that's why. Teresa Humphrey says she loves the way your cabinets are decorated. Oh, hi Teresa, and thank you so much. I appreciate that. I try to keep it, you know, themed for the season and stuff. Um, it's I kind of started that, what was it, around Memorial Day, I think I did, didn't I? Yes. Okay. We're going to add a little more milk and a little vanilla. Make a nice glaze to go over our crescent ring. Now, did you show them the crescent ring? Can they see it? Not really. And that was stove cam? They could see a little bit of it. Okay, I'll hold it up warm when I'm, before I go in. Roxanne Simpson says she wants one of each. Oh, Roxanne, I like the way you think. And I apologize for the noise. It just kind of is, unfortunately, when you're mixing. Okay. Yeah, that needs more. And that's the thing, you can keep adding. If it's too thick, add just a drop or two of milk or vanilla. If it's uh, 
too thick, uh, if it's too thick, add milk or vanilla. If it's uh, too thin, add more powdered sugar. Pamela Hoffman wants to know where you get your inspirations for your recipes. Ah, uh, well, that's a good question. Um, I read cookbooks and like um, websites that have cooking on them and recipes like their novels. Um, to me, that's reading. <laughs> Um, I read books too, of course, but um, I, I just love reading a good recipe and I look at it and I can picture it in my head and I'll be like, ooh, that sounds good. Or if something is weird, I'll be like, ooh, that's, but I don't know. And I just kind of tweak things in my head and, I, and these sounded good to me when I saw them and that's how I picked these. They were things I hadn't made before except the breakfast pie um, and of course the crescent, little crescent, um, little smokies. <laughs> but I thought these looked really easy and um, user-friendly, which is also something I take into consideration for you guys. And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically how I do it. Okay, we're gonna go over here, Richard. Cricket Fox says she's been looking forward to this. Oh, Cricket, you're so sweet. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar. It's still not a little bit too thin, I think. I added a little too much milk in the beginning there. And you want the glaze to stick to your, you know, Danish. You don't want it running all over the place. Anthony the Molar Man wants to know if you ever watched Julia Child. She was great. Oh, oh, I sure did. I loved watching her on PBS growing up. I know. Everyone was watching Mr. Rogers, which I love too. But I always like to tune into Julia Child. Uh, I was a cooking nerd from a young age. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of warm still, I can't really lift it. Oh, you can? Okay, good. So this is our uh, beautiful crescent Danish. And we're just gonna do what we did with our cherry danishes and just make it all pretty and fancy. And I just go back and forth, back and forth. You can make a pretty design. However you like to do it is fine. Roxanne Simpson said she watched Julia Child when she was little also. Oh, that's awesome, Roxanne. Yeah, she was a real inspiration, and she was so fearless in the kitchen, and I think that's what gives me, like, my sense of calm because I remember her, you know, having things go wrong like, like I did when my crescent rolls were the sheet and not the rolls, and she would roll with the punches too. She'd be like, okay, let's let's figure this out, and, and she didn't – write about anything and that's how I like to be it's like it's the kitchen it's not like we're you know trying to solve world peace or anything we're just cooking <laughs> it's supposed to be fun oh there you go Richard you got a Swedish chef in you too okay so I'm going to wash this out and then we're going to move on to our uh, pumpkin uh, dessert and that one we actually are making in the air fryer. So, a little bit of everything today. And I don't know, I can't remember if there's a glaze on that one. But if there is, we're just going to make a new one. Okay. Oh, I love the galloping gourmet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he was awesome. Okay, so we're going to let that glaze set up, and now we're going to move on to our last recipe of the evening, which is going to be our air fryer pumpkin cream cheese crescent pockets. Say that five times really fast. Okay, so we need granulated sugar, pumpkin pie spice, um, two ounces of cream cheese, a quarter cup of canned pumpkin, not pumpkin pie mix, 
um, a can of crescent rolls or crescent roll dough sheet, which I have, and a tablespoon of melted butter. Then we're going to drizzle it, oh, good, with milk and powdered sugar and vanilla again. <laughs> And we top it with some chopped pecans. And you could do that with your apple pie, too, if you wanted to. At this point, you could add some chopped nuts to the top, walnuts, pecans, whatever. Um, I, I think it's fine the way it is. So I'm just going to leave it and let it sit. Okay. So cut two 8-inch rounds of parchment paper and put them in the air fryer basket. Oh, okay. I just need parchment stuff for the air fryer. No worries, because I've got circles already cut out from when I made my dumplings. And I just got to find them. Hmm. hmm. They were on the door. But I don't see them now. Well, what I'm going to do then is just make a square of parchment. Since my air fryer is square anyway, I'll just cut it to fit the basket. And like I said, this is how we roll. We make it work. Okay. And I'm just going to fold it. Like that, sitting there like that. Perfect. And now, wait a minute, that's not the right recipe. Oh, I put it over here. I was like, where did it go? Okay. And we need the cooking spray. Like that. Okay. I'm going to spray it with cooking spray liberally. And then, in a small bowl, we are going to mix a third of a cup of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, let's see, so I just need a small bowl for that. I'll use this. I'll just measure it into here. So I need a third of a cup. And then I need one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I need my teaspoon measurer. I need my pumpkin pie spice. And I need my granulated sugar. There we go. Awesome. So, we're going to measure a third of a cup. <laughs> Funny. Okay. And now we need one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And that's this right here. And that's kind of a mixture of like cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, ginger. It is the real Steve this time. Are you sure? Shouldn't he be a mod? <laughs> he is. Oh, okay. Well, then that's why. But I can't tell on yours. Right. Tell. Okay, now I'll tell you, Steve. You can come over and help me eat all this stuff she's making. <laughs> and we won't tell Cody. Nope, we won't say a word. Okay. So, let's see, I'm mixing the sugar and the pumpkin pie spice, so it's well incorporated. And then in the medium bowl, we're going to be four tablespoons of the um, sugar with the cream cheese. Oh, Cricut, I will look up the exact ratio of measurements. I know what goes in it. It's just knowing how much of each thing to put in there. Um, but yeah, it's basically um, cinnamon, allspice, cloves, nutmeg, ginger, 
that kind of thing. Ooh, those look good. I think they might need, well, let's see. I think they're done. What do you think? Because the cheese is starting to come out of them. They look done. Woo! Wow. They hot? <laughs> they're hot. They smell good. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to be cream cheese. This is not Steve's favorite. And four tablespoons of granulated sugar. Four tablespoons. I'm guesstimating here. Okay. And then, then we're going to add the pumpkin. So I better open that can of pumpkin. And I put my mixer away too soon, didn't I? Awesome, awesome. Now I need my mixer again. There we go. Steve said, not my favorite is the nice way to say it. <laughs> I know. V and JP are here. Well, hello. Welcome in. Is that the right way? There's a right way and a wrong way with these. You have to do it just the right way or it won't, it won't stay in. Yeah. I thought the other way was the right way. Yep, that was the right way. I don't know why I second guessed myself. this in. Granulated sugar, pumpkin pie flour, electric mixer until well blended. Let me add the pumpkin. How much pumpkin? A quarter, quarter cup. Okay. Now we're going to add a quarter cup, and I'm just guesstimating here. Richer. You can get the apple things too. Oh, this is a really pretty color. Okay, so if we're using a dough sheet, we're going to unroll it and cut it into four rectangles and then each rectangle in half so that we get eight pockets. looking really lovely. Very autumny and pumpkin-y and fall. It's saying fall. Okay, there we go. All right, 
now we're done with the hand mixer. Okay, so we're gonna go get our dough. Which I have here. We're gonna unroll our dough sheet. There we go. Okay, this is gonna be pretty easy. Because, what did I do? Oh, okay. Halloween stuff 2021 says, hey John, happy Sunday. Oh, hello, happy Sunday. Okay, so we're gonna cut it in half and then in half. Everyone's putting hearts in the chat for your feet. Oh, thank you. So now it says to cut it in half, and then we're going to cut it in half that way. Okay. Got it. And we're going to need a fork because we're crimping. Jennifer just... said, going to keep watching, but have to leave the chat. Have a great evening, everyone, and oh. thanks for the great stream, Donna and our jokes. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you were here. And um, thank you so much for sticking around as long as you did. You guys, you're awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. It's just going to crimp. And then we have a pretty pie like that. And we're going to do this for the remainder of these. Over, crimp. Pretty. Got some on me. Mm, you're gonna like it. <laughs> Let's see. It's easier if I. There we go. Had some oozing out of that one. Okay. Not really like my hand. Mike 88 said you're a trooper. Oh, thank you. Well, it's funny. I have these grand ideas for what I want to do, and I'm like, oh, it shouldn't take that long. And I get to talk in, and the oven takes longer than I think it'll take, and it kind of just happens. <laughs> I don't want oozing. I'm just going to go for it. There we go. Bauer is watching us cook. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love it. 
That is most awesome. Kim's farm life said, I love packages of dough. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> There's always something good in them. Hmm. There we go. All right. So now we have to brush the tops with melted butter which I will do right now. I'll go melt my butter. Which should not take that long. Because it's half melted already. Okay. Brush half with a with half of the butter and sprinkle. I believe we are putting this butter on to make a uh, healthy um, sugar mixture stick to it. Who so that Dave said, I enjoy wrapping the dough can on the counter and making the pop sound. Yeah. Cut into four and four. Okay, mixture. Did that, did that, did that. Oh, well, heck, I was supposed to do that while they were there. Uh, but wait a minute. How could I put them in the air fryer if they wasn't preheated yet? Oh, okay. It's saying to put them in there now. I would not have thought to do that, but okay. And then put the sugar on top of it. Now it says to set it to 325 degrees. And I've never done it where I don't preheat the air fryer first. That's so weird. But I'll do what it says to do, and we'll see how it comes out. It says to do it to 325. Or 325 for seven to ten minutes. We'll do it for seven. That's so strange. I don't get it. Okay. 
Okay, so we have uh, one more thing to taste while we're waiting for this to go. Actually, we have two things to taste. See how the pumpkin things come out, and then um, we can be done. All right, so these are the um, apple cheddar crescent roll bite thingies. Apple cheddar crescent roll bite thingy. Mmm. That's surprisingly good. Good flavor. Mm hmm I didn't think I'd like these. I like them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, my feet are kicking in. Where's the stool? Mm. I'm going to sit for a bit. Julie C says hi, Donna, and everyone in the chat. Hey, guys. I'm kind of over here now. <laughs> Sorry. My feet gave out. Richard, could you hand me my water? It's right in front of you. Thank you. Yeah, this recipe is weird because it's telling me to do things I'm not used to, like start my air fryer with the food in it before I, yeah. So um, it says set air fryer to 325, bake for 7 to 10 minutes or until deep golden brown on the top and sturdy enough to turn. So then we're going to turn it and bake it for another 2 to 4 minutes or until the dough is golden brown and thoroughly cooked. And then we drizzle it with the, wait a minute. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And then we drizzle it with the, the um, powdered sugar, milk, vanilla glaze. See, now it's saying to add the food. That's so dumb. I don't get that. But whatever. It's good. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to do it the way it says to, and and we'll see. But it doesn't, doesn't make sense because it's cooking while it's heating up. So go figure. Okay. So shall we recap what we've made so far today? As my microphone falls to the ground again for the hundredth time. Um, we made the breakfast pie. We made the chicken cordon bleu roll-ups. We made the crescent, mini crescent dogs. We made the sausage rotel bites. We made, what else did we make? Oh, we made the... Um, the, my favorite, the peanut butter cup caramel stuffed um, crescent rolls. We made uh, the mini cherry Danish. We made the apple Danish ring. And we're making the um, pumpkin pie now. Did I miss anything? Oh, the apple cheddar bites. Right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We made so much. <laughs> That's what happens because there's so many good recipes out there using crescent roll dough. And I honestly had a hard time choosing. And I was like, well, this only takes 10 minutes to bake. And that only takes, and I was, I, they're all relatively quick and simple. However, when you're making 10 things in one show, it can pile up. But we did it. And we're on the last one. So we're in the home stretch, guys. And thank you for sticking with me. It was longer than I thought it would be, but you guys are troopers. I appreciate you. How's it going, Richie? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost your bedtime. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This has been so much fun though. I love cooking with crescent roll dough. How's the chat doing? Everyone doing okay? <clears throat> Stephanie Danielle says, been watching since 4 p.m. Thank oh you so gosh. much for the amazing recipes. Oh. Can't wait to try these. My husband is very excited for the cherry. Oh, that so is far, so awesome. So what has been your favorite? Oh. What was the last part? What's been your favorite so far? Oh, well, let's see. If I had to pick an overall, like, favorite favorite, I would have to go with the peanut butter cup caramel stuffed. And those were, the, like, the easiest ones to make, too. Although the Danish was excellent. Okay, for the sweets, I would go between. It's a tie between the peanut butter cup with the caramel and the um, uh, cherry danish. And for savory, I would say the um, sausage rotel bites were really, really good. What about you, Richie? I like the cherry danish the best for the sweet and the breakfast pie for the other. Richie loves breakfast pie. Okay, I've got these in a, the Danish are in a lock and lock. I'm going to check those um, pumpkin things because I think they might be ready to flip. My hands are all sticky. Okay. UK Disney Keith and Mandy say, you've been amazing as always, oh, Donna. Well you. done. Everything looks so yummy. We love your cooking streams. Aww. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys for being so supportive. And I know it's so late in the UK and that you guys stick around for me, Mandy and Keith. It just means the world. Thank you so much. I love you guys, honestly. Okay, I'm flipping these. They do look pretty, though. Come on. Okay. There we go. So we'll see how that comes out. But I'm going to make the, um, the glaze so that it's ready. I don't need this filling. I can make glaze in here instead. Oh, and guys, um, our next stream is going to be a little bit simpler. I won't be making a gazillion thing, so it, it will be shorter, I promise. We're going to be making, um, in two weeks, all things zucchini. Um, so hopefully you guys like zucchini. Um, I'm making zucchini fritters, stuffed zucchini boats, um, and a zucchini cake. So it should be a lot of fun, and I hope you'll be able to join me for that. Let's see how this goes. We don't need a whole lot of glaze, so I'm going to make it small.
and there's a hint of milk, which is over here. And a hint of vanilla. Drops. CH. CH said, You're such a bright soul, you could burn beans on the grill and we would still be here to watch you. Oh, CH, you're so kind. Thank you. Thank you so much. That truly means the world to me. Um, you know, that you guys stick around like this. And I know you could be doing so many other things, I know. And that you stick with me and watch me cook and, and keep me company while I do it. Um, you just make me smile. You're a bright spot in my day. And I do this because I love you guys and I love chatting with you. And it's my way of visiting with you. And it just warms my heart when I get to spend time with the people I love. So thank you so much for being here. Julie, a lot of scraping noise too. Julie C said she made cranberry walnut zucchini muffins for the first time. That sounds amazing. Jenny B likes to put zucchini in her scrambled eggs. Ooh. That sounds great. Okay. So let's see. I need a plate. So just for the purposes of time, Richard, I'm going to glaze these, even though they're supposed to sit a minute. We can take our picture and we can wrap up because we can uh, try a little bite and wrap up because I'm getting really tired, guys. <laughs> I've got a, I'm in training too. I've got my cookie baking marathon coming up in November for Give Kids the World. So I've got to get in training here for that so I can make it through. Okay, I gotta throw some pecans on here. These are super duper hot, I'm just warning you. Here we go. Okay. I hope they look pretty. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, um, we can cut into one of them. We'll put one on a plate. Here, grab one of those. What we'll do is we'll cut it in half and then we can put, no, I'm out of places. Oh, we didn't try the Danish. We'll do that real fast. Do you need a fork? You don't have a fork? Here, I'll get you a fork. Okay. Here we go. Might want to blow on it. It's going to be hot. Mmm, hot, but really good. I'll finish the, I'm making the rest of those after we finish the show. I'll do the last batch. Mm. 
They're really yummy. They sound good. I really like them. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't finish the last batch, but I'll make the last batch after we finish. Okay. And the last thing we have to do is the danish, and we'll be done. Um, we'll do the same thing. We'll just cut a hunk out and uh, There we go. Okay, we're going to the Danish. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That's another winner. Mmm. That's really good. Okay. So. Overall, I would say everything was doable, user-friendly, stuff I would make again. And not only would I make it again, it was like super good. I would serve this to company. I would put this out for parties. I'm very pleased with all the recipes we made today. How about you, Richard? We need company. Come help us eat all this. <laughs> yeah, we've got leftovers. So my local friends, please message me. I'll hook you up and treat you really well with some food there. So just let me know and say the word. But um, I'm really tired. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. We went over four hours, which I wasn't anticipating doing. Um, but like I said, I'm in training for um, November. And I don't know why my watch is talking. But anyhow. Um, but for now... I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thank you all for joining me. Everyone who sent a PayPal or a um, super chat, anyone who stuck around for four hours, you guys are amazing. You are troopers. I love that you hang in there with me. That means the world to me. To my moderators, thank you for all your help. I can't thank you enough. You guys are incredible. My channel members, I love you. I appreciate you. Your support means everything to me. And I guess I will see you guys in two weeks and we will be making all things zucchini. So until then, I wish you a happy two weeks. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and always try to make someone smile if you can. Okay, guys, good night. Good night, fake Steve. <laughs>